up, guys? We're the Lake Kick Podcast. We're coming off of an incredible, an incredible, there's my beautiful face. We're coming off of an incredible night of fights. Uh, this card overpromised. It overdelivered. Um, but in the meantime, well, let's tell you a little bit about who this are. Oh, we are. Mike, uh, <laughs> Mike, you want to... Wait a second. Way to nail that. Stuck the landing. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> I was. I had a perfect flight, and then, you know, I just... Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. It's off. It's off. I just crashed into the Twin Towers there at the end. Um, Wait, whoa, whoa. <laughs> what? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. Oh, jeez. Headphones on. Yeah, we are starting. Yo, hey, George, oh, okay. George, George Bush did nothing wrong. No, I'm kidding. He's a, he's a war criminal. Okay. Um, Sorry, like, if we do the counter of just, like, uh, problematic or inflammatory things that Stefano says, and then just... <laughs> Call it the Stefano, like the canceled counter, and every time I, yes! say, I say something like Yeah, there needs to be an effect, a sound effect for, <laughs> for, sure. for, like, for when he takes a shot. Yeah. <laughs> it should be like <laughs> for sure. It should be, it should be like Morning Combat where it comes up with like a little image of me on the screen with a counter. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, by the way, Jeremy, they can't see you, so move your mic to like the side. You know, like just, or just like dip it down. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. shorten your mic. Oh, I dipping down. I I've been trying to dip mine down the entire time, and it's not working for me. So well, that's, well, that's really cool, Mike. Okay, so since Mike doesn't want to do his job, I'll uh, I'll introduce us. So right. um, I don't over really here. care about being seen. It's okay. <laughs> Jeremy is best when heard but not seen. Honestly, <laughs> he's I got a radio face. Radio <laughs> not in for the fame. Oh, he, he said it, not me. Jeremy, I think you're a beautiful man. So, to Thank my you. right, to my right, we have beautiful man Jeremy Asifo. Wow. NCAA football player, ready to knock your lights out and take, <laughs> you, and take your wife. Um, on the phone, we have David Agabuvave. Oh, a my man, God. Oh, no. <laughs> a man, hold on, hold on, stop, stop. hold on. A man who needs no introduction. A man whose feminist slam poetry has been published all over the place. Um... In many a bathroom stall. What's up? I said in many a bathroom stall. In many a bathroom stall, exactly. Hopefully the women's bathroom. And <laughs> finally, finally, <laughs> we have we have Michael Asifu. That's it, just Michael Asifu. Okay, I'll, I'll okay, no, we have Michael. Something. We have Michael Asifu. Yeah, give him a proper introduction. All right, all right. Man. Michael, Michael, we have we have M- melanin Mike Asifu, a man who will take a fight on. Five days notice, five seconds notice. It doesn't matter. This man is always ready to go and hide your kids, hide your wife, hide your husband, because he's fighting everybody out here. You don't have. We to are the like it. Confess, we looking for you. You, you don't, don't have to. Fight. You don't have to fight. fight. You don't have to hide your kids and your and your uh, wife because he's uh he doesn't hit women. <laughs> what? That's a good save. Okay, Jeremy. Thank you for that. <laughs> Thank you, Jeremy. Hey, you know, in this cancel culture, you got to cover all bases. You know? That is hilarious. <laughs> you cover all bases. Hilarious. Shouts out to covering all bases, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey. Well done. This podcast is going nowhere fast. Hey, we, <laughs> okay, to get us back on the rails, we did have a stellar event this weekend i'm not gonna lie um mm. and i'd love to talk about it but first we got to do some fight announcements some news because you know there's a couple of things that crept up on us i know i'm gonna miss a few but uh you know how about we get into it oh take, take a deep dive hey i was telling mike the other day by the way david we have a different dynamic somehow when like it's different people when me and mike it's so weird when we're in the studio it's so like matter of fact well, let's talk about this fight you know <laughs> oh you know i disagree that the low light kick uh, has no effect on that particular fighter it's more uh, less of a uh, and then when it's you and me we're just a couple of goofballs you know yes. it's just like the dynamics change so and then once the four of us it's just mayhem because you and David did a podcast. They you know? they they attempted one. So basically, oh, oh it's, by a, the, it's lost media. By the way, there's a lost episode of David and and Stefano doing the podcast when I was like gone in the wilderness. Somewhere. Hey Mike, push push that mic up closer to your face. Never. Oh, it's a little it's a little tinny. All right. And there's also the last episode of um, me and Mike as well. Oh yeah. Uh, morning, Kobe, Kobe Bryant, Bryant. Which always upsets me. <laughs> anyway, yeah, no, for sure. I feel like you know it's a different combination, give different vibes, you know. So yeah, it's because that's I'm the least funniest person on earth. That's, that's so funny. funny. <laughs> that in itself is funny, Michael. That is funny. <laughs> um, yeah, it's kind of like an orgy. It depends on who you bring. The flavor of the orgy is really going to be different. Um, 
My God. I should let I you really, know what Stefano does in his free time. Man, yeah, we, really, we really need a button for Stefano. We do. <laughs> <laughs> You're canceled. <laughs> so, um, oh, yeah. Let me get into some news, if, uh, if I may. Some fight ma- announcements. Sure. Number one, and I want to get your take on this because this is weird. Conor McGregor just released a series of DMs between him and Dana White. Woo! It's, it was Chilala. spicy. It was spicy. <laughs> oh, my Chilala. God. It was so spicy. <laughs> I can do that act. That's, That's terrible. Tell it. Okay, so basically, what Connor alleges is that. Well, not uh, alleged. I mean, it's it's him and Dana. Yeah, it is him and Dana. I'm just trying to. I'm trying to. Mike, could you pull up these uh, these tweets on screen? Because I think it's worth a laugh. Okay, let me let me see if I can. Find We're gonna get them. to the. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you a quick summary in the meantime while Mike's pulling it up. But some of the gist of it is that Connor wanted to fight against Diego Sanchez. Um, <laughs> like, why? What, what, uh, and Dana White literally was like, bro, if we made that fight, we'd get a promoter's license revoked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's funny. But at the same time, as we saw this weekend, like, Diego Sanchez, once a legend, is now kind of just like a weird old man in a young man's sport. And it's really sad. Diego, get some help, brother. Um, we care about you here at the light kick. Yeah, it's it's it it's not good. It's not. Good. Is this the DMs? It's the DMs. I I mean I don't know if it's all of them, but like okay. Diego Sanchez is an MMA fighter. Uh, well, not he's fought on the card. Well, not anymore. So, not, not, not only is he, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I remember the fight between prelims. Remember the guy we were saying whose uh, cornerman is kind of like a cult leader. Remember that? Oh, or were yeah, you not there at that point? No, I was there. I was okay, there. okay. But this was a prelim fight, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I think it was maybe okay. the feature prelim. All right. So we can talk about it later. We can talk about a bunch of things on the screen. I apologize. But That's OBS for you. Uh, but here's the DMs here. I'm going to show you. All right. Uh, so we have something about LA date. Um, uh, we don't have any dates. Okay. Yeah. We don't have any LA dates in the schedule. No way to hear else. Like, could we? I've had so basically, Connor, it seems like he's trying to get a fight with Dana. Uh, have different. I think this is in regards I got a question. to Justin. I got a question. How much are the fight actual fighters involved, or whatever the fighters represents representation, uh, in uh the process of putting together fights? Because like, Usually it's it's not like. That, no? Well, it's it's so okay in terms of because I guess the UFC would be their promoters, right? No, uh, yeah, the UFC is the promoters, but then they, they have, have managers, managers right? negotiating yeah, exactly. on their behalf, right? But see, this is the way right because when you like. I'm sorry. Sorry, no, go ahead. Go I ahead. just got a quick question because, like, when you're a boxer, like, you sign with a promotional company, but then you might have, like, your own agent, I'm thinking, right? You oh, go, would probably go back, know go that, back. right? I just wanted to read that out. Okay, yeah, sure. So, so, so like, how does it work with the UFC? Um, so, with the UFC... And, ma- and making matches okay. happen. So, this is back in February, so this is pretty shot down. We we're 100% waiting to do LA. This is this is bollocks. I'm not waiting on this guy. Or this is bollocks. I'm not waiting on this guy. Who's there? All of a sudden, Carter's from Liverpool, but whatever. That's not a sure. Liverpool. It's, it did not sound like Irish. It's not Liverpool. All. It's Liverpool. Okay, it's keep a, going. Keep going. All right. So it's I think this bollocks. is in regards to Justin Gaethje, to be honest. Gaethje or Ferguson or whoever he was supposed to Yeah, and, and he said there was no L.A. date. But remember, they actually go to Tachi Palace. Right? Really? Or whatever. The entire yeah, game. Game. I, yeah, I, I don't know what you're talking about. about. All right. Let's see these gems. Who? Who's there? Anyone? <laughs> a fight? Maybe in LA? Maybe me and Diego in Dublin? Mm-hmm. Rematch at the end of the year? Boom. Me and Diego in Dublin. He's a cracker. No, it's... All right. And then Dana White? Bro, we should lose a promoter's license if we would make that fight. I thought he fought one of the better fights, being honest. Considering the opponent and the style and the attributes, he's referring to Michelle Pajera. What date is the Brazil card? Wait, wait, wait. He's referring to the same Michelle Pereira fight where Diego Sanchez got beaten for a round and then that's won the one. his qualification, that's, right? That's the one. Okay. Look, hey, if we, we thought a lot of us, and I think some of us here thought the, uh, the Cerrone fight was kind of punching down for McGregor. That, the Diego that. Sanchez fight is like going to the playground to slap the crap out of a couple of toddlers and put it on your MMA <laughs> record. Like... That, that's this is insane. I have wh- where is what is his in his. All right, do you want to keep going with this? Uh, keep going, thing? keep going. Okay. Yeah, I'm in. Okay, all right, here you go. I thought he fought one of the best. Oh, I read that one. The Brazil card. Who's next? Gaethje. When? Where? Let's get going. Same as before. I'm going to have my team reach out to you. Is that what you want, kid? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, 
Why is this turning into like an anime episode? <laughs> <laughs> no, because honestly, if I'm opening the text, it Japanese opening. It sounds kind of Japanese. Like, <laughs> no, no, but the thing science, is, like, it sounds kind of like yeah. If you know, they know you have this on at my family. All right, all right, all right. Keep going, because yeah, because it's getting kind of racist. <laughs> what, what are we thinking? Hey, hilarious! Shout out to Japan. <laughs> <laughs> no, great, great international fight week. Great entertainment. What date is that? Connor doesn't know it's in July. Come on, she, my filthy casual. July seventh. Yeah, July. Hold on, hold on. You blind fool! It's July question mark. July. Yeah, I'm blind. <laughs> okay, all right, wait. Somebody Thanks, has to be Dana. Somebody phone should phone. be Connor. What's that? Hold on. What? Sorry. David. One more time. Someone should be Connor. Someone should be Dana. Okay, right. I'll, I'll be Connor. All right, I'll, I'll be Dana. Oh, hold on, I messed <laughs> up. Put on your best. Put on your best. This is drama. We're going into drama class. Okay. Guys. All right, you're you're the you're the you're the July. You're July, Mike. Yes, July. That's the soon state we have, kid. I, I that sounds like Bruce Buffer. Yeah. yeah. It's too far. What about May? Far, 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 far. Give me our belt. Give me our belt. <laughs> we have small fights leaned up in May. It tiny markets. Nothing big. Well, all right then, me boyo. The old switcheroo. July is the earliest day I could do for you, kid. July 11th in Vegas. It's our first U.S. date for a while. We, I worked on it all day today. Great it's accent, Michael. Do. Man, I'm being well, transformed right now. Well, I do. I'm being I, transformed into, I can already smell the Axe body spray. <laughs> I, I, I do like Las Vegas. For, for, for. Last time I was there. I snorted a pile of cocaine and threw a dolly through a bus. Wait, where are you? Where are you reading this? <laughs> no, it's not there. His ad lib. <laughs> His ad lib. <laughs> All right, let's get back. Let's actually get back to things. I apologize for this weird view. If you're yeah, that was weird, actually. Um, <laughs> from this end. Yeah. Um. So Dana White seems. We can spend as much or as little time on this as you guys want, but from what it seems to me, Dana White was all pissed off about this because he's like, "Oh, this is one of the dirtiest tricks you can play." I don't exactly see the. Uh, you know. I don't see the level of, uh, yeah. Let me let me. Let, it let it me is what this. it is. If you want to, you want me to wait till. Uh, you got you ready? I think I'm ready. Uh, we but... apologize to our TV studio audience at the leg kick. Okay. We may bring you good, excellent takes and Conor McGregor impressions, but right, professionalism is something we're not about. Okay. okay. Um. Yeah, man. I I think I think Dana's just mad because Conor kind of pulled up the curtain for a second on the negotiation process and how duplicitous it can be. Good for him. Look, here's the deal. He, he's one of the few people wait. with a, enough power to pull this off and not get fired. Wait, so good wait, for wait, wait, what? How is that what you got from that? Me? How? What well, okay. Was I also I'm duplicitous because uh, because you know Dana White in. Okay, I'll tell you why. You, you got to take it in kind of the greater context of what he's been saying. Basically, he's been saying stuff like, oh, Connor doesn't want to fight and this and that. And like, Connor's you know, turning everything down. Turning everything. Yeah, he's turning right. down all these matchups and he's trying to present one narrative when, you know, their negotiations say something completely different. I mean, he wants and to Dana fight White, Gaethje in May. Like, yeah. The, what I'm seeing is he wants to fight Gaethje in May. And then Dana White said, we can't do May. And then all of a sudden, Tony Ferguson versus Judge and Gaethje happens in May. So, yeah. Now, clearly, look, Connor wants to fight. Now, look, it. I don't think. That was, I think, Gaethje versus Ferguson was the right matchup to make. Mm -hmm. To be honest, you just fought Donald Cerrone at Walter Waite, and then all of a sudden you think you deserve a number one contendership match. Like, no, but it does lend to the fact that Dana wasn't upfront with him. That's yeah, sure, and I mean, because Dana White always tries to get ahead of, um, you know, get ahead of everybody and set out the narrative and set the tone for the argument, and all the Zufa zombies out there are like, <laughs> yeah, Dana, you and, know, and let me mostly just say, correct. Hold on, let me just hold say on. another thing. Definitely was not trying to fight Diego Sanchez. The point of bringing up Diego Sanchez's name was just to throw out something as a feeler, as a joke, to then go to Justin Gage. Well, you don't know that. I hope that's the case. I really yeah, hope he was actually trying to fight. Like, but no. hold I hope on, so. I'm confused. But there's no tone in, in text messages. You can't read tone into a text. No, message. it's a good point. Sorry, David. You want to say something? Else? Yeah, man. So many, so many sub thoughts. And yeah, we don't have to spend too much time about this because on this because it was actually a real fight, but. <laughs> For me, why why is Dana White calling the fully grown man Conor McGregor kid? I think that's weird. Just right. Uh, just just to say it out loud, I, I think that's weird. Like that's kind of like a a power trip thing. Anyway, it's, unco it's uncomfortable, it's like right? When, it's yeah, like when that's... people call like a coworker, like it's like when people call a coworker buddy. It's like yeah, like, buddy. Not, that that yeah. one always feels demeaning. Yeah, or boss. Hey, boss. You think so? <laughs> hey, boy, so what's I call people buddy all the time. What? Yeah, no, me too. Like, no, it's like, <laughs> like, you, 
when okay sorry when like in, in when you're like um being a boss served, when you're being yeah served by like let's say i'm like a, a person working at behind the desk somewhere right and someone comes uh, to you because okay. like hey buddy and stuff like that it's just like weird it's like i'm not your buddy yeah you can tell you can yeah, tell when there's guy, a guy i'm not your pal friend to it there. <laughs> hey, hey david you know what i mean like sometimes someone just calls you buddy and you're like I ain't your buddy friend and you're like I, I ain't your friend guy and they're like i ain't your guy dude. I ain't your dude, bro. so on and so forth. oh man i've never felt like that but also it depends, another thing yeah, that we're it really... depends on the setting but i can definitely see how you can feel talked down to in this situation with connor and dana i can definitely see the power dy- the like the the mental power game or whatever yeah, like yeah. the mental that's weird. It's funny because if also... anyone if anyone Sorry, David. Go on. Uh, no, I was going to say, I, I've actually done a, a lot. I did a little bit of reflection on Dana White. And what's crazy is that Dana White, I feel like a lot of the times, talks, and I don't know the man, obviously, but he talks like he owns the UFC. And even when people talk about, like, you know, um, negotiations for, um, like, salaries and blah, 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 I, I feel like a lot of the times, like, it's like, Dana White calls all the shots, and I don't know how the UFC works. It probably does work to like like that to some degree, but from what I understand, like he's not like the owner; he's just like the president, right? Yeah, exactly. He's he's a minority shareholder, right? Yeah, he's still like accountable to somebody, right? Like that's kind of how like corporations work. So the UFC doesn't this or Dana White, even though he speaks for the UFC, like it. it I don't know. I, I just feel like it's weird how sometimes. We blame things that are more like a systemic problem on Dana White as opposed to being like, hey, why is this thing like like this? For this text, I, I think it's weird to I, I don't know. I just think Conor McGregor would want to fight Diego Sanchez. Like, I actually disagree with Michael in terms of um, Fair whether enough. Like, it's just it, it, honestly, it's it's conjecture. Like, it's conjecture. But the point I'm trying to make, though, is like. On one hand, I am with I am with Dana in the sense that like these are private talks. You don't really yeah. if you're trying to maintain some some sort of relationship with somebody, it's a private talk. But on the other hand, I think it does really show a different side because we're we were on this podcast and I'm saying, you know, Connor doesn't look like he wants to fight and, and Connor's ducking everybody. Yep. And and here I rem- I remember a couple years back I was like Connor's ducking Habib and, and Connor's doing this. Doesn't show and anything. This, but this doesn't That's, prove anything. Sorry. No, no, like, I just but, want to jump in. Though, but, but because David, all it to... is, it's like us having one conversation, you taping that conversation, and then using that like tape to define the entire like context of what we uh, of what we were talking about. But just because you have that snippet doesn't make it like what it you're is. Right. Yeah, no, you're you're sure, right. You're right. Because I think David's I, right. David's right. Because there there could be a lot of backstage no, negotiations no. and the managers talking to Dana's people and yada yada yada. No, but, but, uh, and I agree. But I'm with you. All I'm saying is that clearly the narrative that Dana White trying is trying to push. There's a hold on a second. Yeah, that's what yeah, I'm trying yeah. To yeah say. There's, there's an agenda. It's like this, propaganda. This kind of like, I think all of us assumed that there's a little more to the story than like you know what had been presented to us. But it's kind of like a wake up Zufa zombies kind of thing. You yeah. Know? And, but again, all, I like that term, all everybody, zombies. but see, this is the problem because again, Dana White wins because all everybody can talk about, and I'm not saying this is a bad or good thing, but all everybody can talk about is, ha ha, Connor wanted Diego Sanchez, LOL. That's what I and took from not, it. Yeah. And not, you know, wait a second, you know, Connor was trying to fight Gaethje in May and got denied here. Now, Wait. again, in my mind, it's in not the right the tone way. of those texts, like, when he asked him, oh, what about Gaethje? When? Where? Let's do it. Dana White says, do you want that fight? Like, even the tone, I know you can't read tone in text. Even the way he texts it, there's so much context that we're missing. Like, yeah. I, I feel Agreed. like conversations they've had before, and who knows what Conor McGregor feels like on a day-to-day basis. And who knows how you might feel like when you're texting somebody or let's say you receive like a weird text from somebody and how do you respond to that? It's your biggest star. Like, yeah. I, I don't know. I, it's, I don't no, wanna... I, it's nothing definitive. If anything, it raises more questions than. Yeah, for sure. That's answer, all I'm right? trying to say. All but, I'm trying to say is that like before we thought Connor was ducking everybody. Well, not we thought, but like at least I thought like Connor was trying to be sure, you know, a little not a little more general managery about his career and who's he's fighting and when he's fighting. Yeah. And it seems like that's it's there's a hold on a second here. About yeah, it. yeah, it could still it still still could be the case that he's ducking and he just did this as like a publicity stunt. But I think I think we've kind of spent more time on this than it deserves. Yeah, so yeah, let me just get no fight, of- man. Yeah. <laughs> we're 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 all very verbose here at the leg kick podcast. And um so 
uh, next matchup matchup, and this one's this one's just kind of I, like. Let me just say off the top though, I really enjoyed that segment about the Conor McGregor. Oh, that was fun. Yeah. That was fun. All right, go ahead. Next um, and this was kind of a weird one. So, Mike Perry, of course, coming off of that stunning victory against the uh, those three old guys in the bar that he knocked unconscious, <laughs> fight, um, is fighting Robbie Lawler. I remember he called it Robbie Lawler years ago. This is just such an odd. This is like the my life spitting out of control matchup, you know? Wow. No disrespect to either guy, like, you know. I thought it was what, a good what, matchup. What, well, it is. It's just Robbie Lawler at this advanced stage of his career. I just don't know what to think. You know what I mean? His last couple of performances, he's just been completely unable to pull the trigger. And some of what defined him as his best attributes seem not to be pl- present. And this fight is announced for... Isn't it like late October? No, oh, November twenty first. So there's a little bit of time, but I just I would if Lawler's going to stay in this, I'd like to see him do a little soul searching, just to is figure that out the main. Is that the main uh, fight on the card? I'm not sure. It says UFC two fifty five, so I'm assuming no. Okay, two fifty five. They probably wouldn't have. Yeah, they, they wouldn't. And um, then Mike no, Perry I, I, made White saying, "Hey, we're going to make him do counseling for his alcoholism and this and that." And uh, yeah, it just it's 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 an uncomfortable matchup to make. It makes this is one of those matchups where it makes me feel like Coliseum or circus. You know what I mean? It's these two guys are at such you know low I, points yeah, in their career. What, what what it shows me is that you know the UFC there is literally almost nothing that you could do to not have a fight in the UFC if you're a professional fighter, yeah, especially now. Like you could pretty much do anything. And still get a fight in the UFC, um, whether it's you know hurting somebody else, hurting yourself, it doesn't matter. You want to um, know why that is? Yeah, because Dana White doesn't care. It didn't. I know it's it's not that. It didn't always used to be that way, but something okay. changed. So why? basically, now they only uh, take away your ability to fight in the UFC under the most extreme circumstances because of the lawsuit that was going against them, the anti monopoly lawsuit. Ah. Right? So. Uh, and fighters attempting to unionize as well. So one of the UFC's defenses for that has always been these, these guys are private contractors, right? They're not employees. So how are you going to enforce this rigid code of conduct on private contractors, right? So since those lawsuits came up, mm-hmm. the UFC has kind of shifted away from that, from enforcing those kinds of standards on its athletes. It doesn't do that anymore. It used to. If you remember, like, uh, Mika, Mikael Fal- Falcao, right? Oh, yeah, he was out. He was like- he was axed. Or Diego Brandao after he got into a – he beat up that bouncer outside of a strip club, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. He- like, if you if you remember back in the day, it didn't always used to be this way. The UFC used to lay down the hammer. If, or, you know what? I even remember, in fact, when Chris Lieben, it came out, there was reports about drug issues. It was actually surprising that Dana was, like, trying to keep him on. Yes. Because, because of course, he has a connection but to Chris even Lieben. then, like, even if you make that argument, as an organization who frequently hires private contractors, you then still have to have some kind of code of standard for the kind of contractors you hire. Uh, like, just in general, if not, what does that say about your organization? That's my, like, I think that's the deeper point. Not necessarily saying, like, the UFC don't have an argument for not enforcing it. It's just, you know, how what what how does the UFC, like, what does that, you know, reflect on the UFC kind of thing? Oh, I um, agree with you. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Morally, I'm right there with you, dude. I think, like, especially because uh, MMA, less so now, but has had such a PR problem for such a long time. It's human cockfighting, it's, which is always, I found hilarious. Like, nobody's ever fought with their penis in MMA before. But all these, all, these mis- <laughs> <laughs> all these all these, all these terrible misperceptions of MMA, Mike, if you can't see, Mike's like clutching his face right now in embarrassment. <laughs> but um, <laughs> there we go. Thank you. Um, the embarrassment cam. Uh, basically, <laughs> basically, um, no, I'm with you though. I'm with you though, David. Like some some offenses, you should, you know, fire the person and distance yourself from them, because on honestly, we don't need uh, even still MMA is trying to push into new markets and become more mainstream, and we don't need people who are necessarily have a domestic assault charge against them, or you know something something to that effect. But like, how many times have we really... seen it though? Like how many times have we like seen it that we have a fighter who has like some kind of legal problem? And a month later, they they have a fight like set up, and it's kind Constantly. of brushed under the rug. And there's a quick like cover up under uh, for the and media the cut up. It works. It works. Yeah, MMA fans. It's almost like MMA fans tend to have low IQ and short term. <laughs> we love you, MMA fans. Listen to this I mean, podcast, please. It's almost like MMA fans are overwhelmingly conservative and dumb. I. 
Hey, don't bite the hand that feeds. I get it. <laughs> Your I turn. didn't say that. I didn't say that. But what I will say, though, is that I agree with Stefano. This is, in a way, I wouldn't say spinning life spinning out of control fight because we don't know the mental state of both fighters, but on past record, it doesn't look good. But um, it's kind of like a show me what you got fight because both of them have had. Are fighting three... for their lives here. Yeah. Yeah. I can see a cut happening one or two fights after this fight. You know what I mean? Like, this is kind yeah. of a. Yeah. And Mike Perry coming off of a win. So a little bit different in that his career is not necessarily at a downturn as much as Robbie Lawler's is because he actually beat Mickey Gall in his last fight and those old guys at the bar. But, you know, <laughs> and then here's another one. I think we talked about this before, but it's actually been rebooked because it was canceled due to COVID. Uh, Thiago Santa, Santos versus Glover and happening November 7th at light heavyweight. I, I am here for all. I am here for that one. You I think we were talking about the Kuda Leva versus Ankalaya fight, which is also rehappening. Also again. rebooked. Yeah. Why are they doing this again? Why? Why are they trying this again? You know, Why are they trying this again? I don't know, but I want to I want to see those light heavyweights exciting for me again. Like it, it yeah, was true. it was exciting when John Jones was at the height of his reign and then he just nuked the division. No disrespect to John Jones. That's a good thing. Three different generations of light heavyweight nuked. Mm. Gone. Yeah, that's 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 true. Like that's I didn't even last night was the first time in a while I got reintroduced to the light heavyweight division. I didn't even really pay attention to it. All I really knew was John Jones and Dominic Reyes after that war they had, but for the most part, you're right. But, like John you know, Jones just separated himself. In a second. Yeah. Yeah. In a second, yeah. But, no, you know. and what I will say is, yeah, you know what? Yeah, let, we'll talk about it in a second. Fuck it. Yeah, I, but I yeah, what? no, like I think I think um what was I going to say, though? Uh, you know, Teixeira versus Santos, I think this is a real good bounce-back fight for Santos because um, I don't know if everybody knows, he, he tore a lot of ligaments in both knees, right? And so the idea is here that um, this is – I think Glover's a good contender, but it's still a good – this is your bounce-back matchup. We're not going to put you in a title shot right away, right? Yeah. But – you know, 100%. this is still a tough fight that you have to wake up for. So I think this is a good fight for Santos, who I really impressed me. In fact, I when I watched the John Jones fight the first time, I thought he won. So, you know, I th- yeah, I think there's something here with Thiago Santos. I, I yeah, I I agree. I felt bad at first for a lot of these contenders at light heavyweight because I'm like, man, they're good fighters, but there's no way you'll ever be champion, right? You you just took you're in the wrong era. And Glover, despite his advanced age, I yeah. feel like realistically capture a title and couldn't find a nicer it's guy. I've been a big Glover fan for a while. Um, yeah. I, I was going to say, now I remember what I was going to say, it's kind of reminiscent to your point, Stefano, um, of, yeah, this is a really boring point, but of kind Are of... talk about taxes? Opposing, no, the opposing forces of being a sports fan and that you want to see like individual greatness or individuals achieve greatness or teams or whatever. But you also want to see competition. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you want to see like a John Jones become dominant, or an Anderson Silva, or an Adesanya, who we can talk about later, like become like all time perennial like all stars or whatever. Um, but you also want to see teams uh, competition, and you don't know who's gonna win, kind of thing. You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah uh, I feel like the light heavyweight has the ladder now, which is which is good for the division because for a long time it wasn't like that. Beautiful. So, uh, on to the anything else you guys want to talk about? You want to go on to the fights? Um, I was gonna get to a couple like nonchalant, like nothing. Uh, uh, news, but quite, quite, like what? Like boxing news? Yeah, yeah. So yes. back to our boxing correspondent, Jeremy Sipo. You guys always forget. Uh, you guys always forget, and I and I want you to start remembering. But, uh, <laughs> I just want to say both the oh, Charlos, 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 both the Charlos won. The older Charlo Jam- Jamal, he uh, retained his belt. Uh, younger Jamel Charlo, he uh, retained his belt as well as gained two new belts, IBF and uh, WBC. I want. Wait, there's also WBO. So I actually have no. No, no, no. It, it was the W. It was the WBO. I think I, he had. And I then think the w- he had the WBO, and then he and then the he WBC. got the IBF and the WBC. I'm just. Oh, the WBO, just, the, the Women's Body Odor Championship. Yeah, for those of you who uh, find it hard to uh, keep up with. All the belts and the rankings. I'm just touching on it really quick. And, uh, you know, this younger Charlo, he's going after all the belts. Well, it uh, it would appear that he would be going after all the belts. He, If he wanted to get the WBA, he'd have to take it from uh, Patrick. Uh, I, I find it hard to 
pronounce his last name, but Patrick to Patrick to 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 Rexia, but um, yeah, like, but is that the guy who won with the body jab? Yeah, yeah, yeah Charlo yeah. won with the body jab, and uh, he knocked out Jason Rosario, uh, who is actually a good fighter. But if he wants to uh, get all the belts, he's gonna have to go up in uh, fighting in uh, competition, yep. like you know, go after uh, Kel Brooks and. Uh, uh, Lara and uh, you he's know too, he's too he's too small for those guys though. No, 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 no. no. Jamel competes in middleweight. Oh, okay. Yeah, he competes in middleweight. It's the older child who competes in a uh, welterweight. I want to say. Ah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. But uh, and this real quick correction. Last last time you know what? I was this t- is covering you. I'm not gonna lie. So you All right. Last time <laughs> when I was taught. Last time when I just went over the boxing scene, I said uh, Vasily Lomachenko is facing Vasil. Uh, Vas- it's Vasily. It's Well, it's spelled Vasily, it means, but... Uh, it means Bill in Ukrainian, Vasil. Okay, Vasil. Okay, Lomachenko. I said he was going against Garcia. That was correction. He's uh he's facing Telofima Lopez. And then Gar- Danny Garcia is fighting Errol Spencer. That one's coming up soon. Wow. Yeah. Errol that's Spencer. A, yeah, wow. that's the... Sorry, sorry. You said Spencer or Spence? Errol I'm Spence. sorry, Errol Spence. I'm sorry. Wait, wait, bad. that's gonna be a good one. I'm sorry, my bad. Errol I, Spence. I am here for Errol Spence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Garcia. I think he's the best in fighter in the world right now. I don't care what anyone says yeah. about Terrence Crawford. Yeah. Errol Spence is the best. Better than Vasil. Oh, and, and Terrence, yeah. but Terrence Crawford, uh, um, and Kell Brooks is is a fight that's close to being finalized. Wait, best best fighter or best boxer in the world? <laughs> best best boxer. Okay, best I'm sorry. Game. When I say fighter, Tough guy. I, it, at the end boxer of the day, fight. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a fight. So I'm gonna say boxer. I don't. I'm gonna say fighter. I don't care. No, no, because I, I, boxing is a fight. I agree with that. But if we're saying best fighter, then an MMA fighter would be able. Man, to be whatever. It's a no, fight. No, it <laughs> is a fight. Right. 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 No, man. I gotta prove even, box, even the boxing what? commentators have admitted it. They're like, huh? What? I was gonna say even like during the Tyson Fury versus. Um, Oh, it was Max Kellerman who. who yeah, he even admitted he's like, you can't call this the baddest man on the planet because the champion of the UFC would. Beat either of these men. No, yeah, of course. It's still prestigious. Of course, they're still it's fighters still at the end of the day. No, I agree. No, no, no. Like, yeah, I think we're arguing on semantics. Yeah, we were. We were on the same. Yeah, yeah we were I think on, we're the, on same the same. Side. Side. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree that they're fighters. Yeah, I'm not. To, uh, boxing is a yeah. fight, and anyone says that it isn't a fight. Well, you're probably ignorant. Yeah. Um, but like, allegedly. But yeah, I mean, um, at the end of the day, you know, Jason Rosario is just not known. He's not uh, up in competition with uh, Charlo because he's just not known enough and. He is a good fight. He is a good boxer. He uh, won most of the rounds against uh, Charlo. He was giving him problems, but, you know, um, he's just not the one you want to go against if you want to, you know, well, tra- to both go up in rankings. The both of Charlos just have a lot of power. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And there's the issue, right? They, they, they yeah, have a yeah, lot yeah. of power and they have a lot of speed. So that's yeah. Just- but if they don't put guys down, they're not gonna. They don't usually win those fights. Yeah, what like was that, what was that one? Tony against, Harrison. Yeah, Tony, Tony Harrison, Harrison. Right. Yeah. I still think Charlo won, but it was. Yeah, know. yeah, me too, me too. But still, uh, yeah. I mean, all right. Um, time and, to move on to the UFC. We had a big event last weekend or this and, weekend. Great. Wait, wait. Main. Unless, unless we go to our our East Asia correspondent. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> not this weekend. I believe in. Uh, it, I think it's next Friday or maybe even in two weeks. Um, but we do have some really exciting 1FC content coming up. Uh, yeah, so, we'll so. mention that at the end of the show. Stay tuned, we'll, guys. We'll we talk have, about we that. Very, yeah. very huge. It's going to be huge. These are the two biggest interviews that have ever been produced by The Lake Kick. These are the best interviews. Okay, The Lake Kick is the best MMA podcast. <laughs> We're going to build a wall around them to protect them from all other podcasts and keep <laughs> the other podcast house out. Okay? All right. <laughs> so. All right. The fight. That was my impression of Joe Biden. Um, <laughs> <laughs> your cattle. Um, <laughs> the fights, the fights. In, uh, in our main events, we had Israel, the last style bender out of Sanya, taking on Paulo Costa. And the, Sanya. if you were, if you guys were here for the preview out there in the audience, and I hope to God you were. <laughs> wow, me and me and Mike, uh, we called it. We yeah. called it. We we made separate separate but interrelated predictions. I I was a little bit. Um, you're about more liberal about the knockdown, which I should, which I should have been. Yeah. So what I what I thought was going to happen, which I was largely right, um, I assumed that the first couple rounds would be all about Israel Adesanya, um, misdirecting the pressure of Paulo Costa, 
And then in rounds three or four, he would get to work and actually apply, apply pressure on Costa himself. That's not quite what happened. Costa was never able to get his pressure going. And that's what was spectacular about this. Izzy forced him to fight at fourth range, out uh, a technical kickboxing fight out in the open. Um, he just constant use of fakes and feints, keeping Paulo Costa guessing as to what's coming. And he never felt comfortable entering in. And as he was out there, being paralyzed on the outside by, 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 you know, inertia and fear, Adesanya just battered his legs. And by the second round, it was too much where Costa was like, screw it. I, 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 you know, he just was trying to enter in now or never. Yeah. And he was coming in with that bull guard, the double forums guard and Adesanya just started picking him apart. That was n- 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 nasty investing in the outside low kicks, the calf kick, the inside low kick up to the high kick. Woo, Mike, well, you, you made a couple of predictions that came true as well. Yeah, um, I think I think the one where I made was look. The whole thing I was trying to say you said is he was going to look good. That's yeah, what you said. I said I said he was gonna look good. the whole thing was. Uh, sorry, David, you want to say something? No, 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 go, go, please. I'll just okay. stop. Uh, no, the whole thing I was trying to say was that the things that Paulo Costa needed Israel Asanya to be bad at, Israel Asanya is a master at. That's that was what I was trying to explain, and that's why I thought he was going to Paulo Costa was really going to look bad, or Israel Asanya was going to look good in this matchup. Because Israel Asanya is a master at not backing himself up against the cage. He's a master at paralyzing you. And he's a master at diverting pressure. He's been a master since ever since his early kickboxing career. He just knows how to do it. Yeah. Right? And no matter, I know he fights a different style in MMA. It's not exactly the way he fights, like, let's say, a, gl- a glory Israel Asanya. But it still is that way where he will paralyze you with feints and fakes. He'll come downstairs. And he invests, he makes investments and stuff. And you saw in the Calvin Gaslam fight to an extent, um, that was a lot more of a a, a fiery, high pace, you know, back and fight. forth. That it was, was a dog, dog fight. fight. But you still saw those kind of ideas where he's he's fainting for four rounds. And that fifth round, it pays dividends. And here, yeah, I, I, Costa wasn't able to get off the brakes here. He wasn't able to get off the second gear. Can I ask you guys I, something? Oh, sorry, go on. I was just going to, go ahead. Thanks, man. Um, I really appreciate the fact that I'm, this is the third uh, Adesanya fight I'm watching in a row because watching this fight, I get to see why Yoel Romero didn't fought the way he fought. Like because I f- I feel like if he would have fought the way I- I've seen Yoel Romero fight in the fight in the past, Adesanya would have done the same thing to him with, like you said, managing distance. Um, keeping the pace up, uh, showing fakes and confusing Paul Costa to the point where he didn't know how to uh, a- approach his uh, game or carry out his uh, fight. So yeah, I really appreciate the fact that I'm getting to watch a, uh, is he a kickboxer or a Muay Thai? He's both. a Muay Thai. I would say both. That's why they call him the lifestyle, right? He's a bit okay. everything. I, yeah. I, I, I'm appreciating the fact that I'm getting to watch somebody who is masterful at their craft, uh, use it against different competitions in different uh, arenas. Yeah, ma- mastery is the only way to describe him. Like, he, yeah. for the life of me, I cannot tell the difference about when he's going to enter in and when he's just throwing a feint. Mm-hmm. And for his opponent, it must be equally as intimidating. Like, his hip feints were on point. He'd One of my favorite things he did throughout this entire fight, and we just rewatched it now, uh, hip feint entered in on, uh, he'd been throwing uh, outside and inside low kicks all night. This time he went for just like a, a nice straight kick to the knee, bounced out to call Paulo Costa filled that space. He bounced back in and just cracked him with a jab. Yeah, it, it's it's oh really helpful to watch it too if like something you want to try. Like, I mean, I know there's guys out there like Aaron Donald who like you can't, you you think you can try what he does on the field, but then you you end up finding out that, that's, that you're not the same kind of athlete. It's the same thing with the style bender. Like there's certain things you want to try like that, like that one uh, skip step, then change your angle and then he he hit him with a he hit him with a kick to the it was like a half knee. pendulum step. yeah it was like a half pendulum step like something i want to try maybe like the same thing but then with a cross like you yeah. just opened up the angle by skip stepping and then going a certain direction like my brain would never conceptualize i'm sorry i'm, just, I'm not showing my face my brain would never conceptualize to even take that angle in a fight like because i wouldn't know how to do it he knows how to do it yeah i want to bring in david in this conversation yeah. uh because you know David said something interesting about this here earlier, right? Eh? Yeah, yeah, because Israel Asanya, you know, he mentioned something about Israel Asanya being from kind of this the same, you know, stomping grounds, Nigeria, obviously. 
Um, and I, I mean, I you know, you can take it everywhere you want, but like, I just want you to get your. Oh your man, jacket. I can't even remember what I said. I can't remember what I said. But uh, the only thing I remember, Jack. I, I want to piggyback off what what's it called? Um, Jeremy said in terms of masterful, because for me, that was my biggest takeaway. I guess reflecting what you guys just said, um, is it's kind of like a lesson. It it it's both like super high level, but also like really basic and fundamental in terms of if you were a fighter and you were longer and you had a better reach than your opponent like what would you tell the fighter to do it's stay on the out outside keep moving try to get some leg kicks in and i feel like you know israel make he does like super complex stuff but he makes it look so easy you know what i mean um the leg kicks, I think, were just like the perfect example in that it wasn't just that, you know, this guy is standing in front of you trying to like, or not moving. It's both like the movement, the timing, the range, the like, it was perfect. Yeah, no, I really don't even have many you, thoughts on it. Um, you, made, you made a great point, though. You made, a, you made a really good point. Like, it's true. Like, a lot of the stuff that he does is basics done at a high level and that like, you can you can learn from right like it's like it's not it's not that a lot yeah it's not that there's an absence of flash here it's not that he fights a meat and potato style but it's just that it's backed up by so many different layers of basics like, done come on, so like perfectly stefano you're like you both of you guys teach striking or have at least been in striking classes um we teach striking. Times, like you know go low with the kick then go high like just simple basic stuff but the way he does it is so intricate and for me, what I really appreciate is the fact that at the biggest stage, he's willing to do it like almost in slow mo. It's almost like well, while other people like are rushing out there, he's he almost like slows it down and it's like a video game. But, and but you know why he can do that though? It's because of the feints. Yeah, it's such a paradox. And, yeah. He slows it down, but he's always active, right? Sorry, yeah. Mike. No, no, no. That's that's that was just what I was gonna say. It's just the feints and the fakes allow him to be. It's the basics because a lot of people talk about the flash with Adrian Asanya, that famous question mark kick, um, the the flow state. Like I was gonna make a joke, you know, did last stair style bender went Avatar Avatar stay in this one, right? I was gonna make that joke, ha, 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 right? But it really is like that where, you know, but it really was like that where because he was he was getting pasta pasta <laughs> pasta pasta italiano uno di noi yeah. Uh, but because he was getting him, you know, paralyzed here, he could do things in slow mo because Costa was going to take advantage of him or rush him to do things, right? Um, which is which I think gives more credit to what Calvin Gaslam did. Calvin Gaslam fought the fight of his life. Yes, that's what right? I'm saying. That, that's what I'm saying. Like it, it's it's so even like if you look back on all of his fights, like it looks like he's doing crazy flashy techniques, but in reality, all he's doing is just like really simple stuff with like the highest level defense I've seen like for like a stand-up fighter in the UFC in a long time like it literally looks like a like a high level Muay Thai or like kickboxer out against like with all due respect to Paulo Costa who's who can strike who's a fighter you know what I mean like this guy is knocking everybody else out yeah. in the division but it literally looked like he was fighting like a, a guy with like only like 10 fights and he has like a hundred kickboxing fights you know what I mean like it looked it looked like he was fighting a step down in competition yeah and we just which is craziest about this because Paulo Costa is clearly a fighter that in a different, not even a different era, in this present era, he's championship caliber. For he, sure. He beat close fights, say what you will about it, but he beat Yo Romero, right? And this is a man who's clearly at a world-class level of, of talent. He has skills. He has legitimate skills to bring him to the top of the middleweight division. But here's Adesanya making him and other people in division look amateurish. He did the same thing to Whitaker. I think you have to rewatch that fight. For real. Uh, because it was, because it was it's the a same, very, he it's knocked a him out with the same combo. Yeah, he it's a different with the same it's, combo. It's same combo, different kind of performance in that it looked like Whitaker was having more success than he actually was. This for me was the most glaring example of, for Adesanya of just like, wow, mm -hmm. this is what he's doing to high level Whitaker opposition. Can kickbox. Like, Whitaker's I, a good kickboxer, and not to take anything away from Costa, but like kickboxer. he's a great kickboxer. So I think like there were things he was doing well against Adesanya that Costa perhaps wasn't. And I think that was the biggest difference. It was almost like watching, because I've been there. We've all been there in the gym as like the guy who's against somebody who's way better than you. And you, you're just like, how do I get in? Like, he's like, that feeling every time he spars me. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> 
All right. All right. <laughs> no, it was really good. But with, no, a, a couple of things I wanted to say also just about Costa, because I think he did do some things well. Like, I feel like his, like, uh, his leg kicks were good. He didn't land a single punch until, like, like the first, not leg kick, sorry, his body kick, his, like, left high body kick, like, left high kick and left body kick. Like, yeah. they at least made Adesanya move, which is better than, you know, getting attacked. Um, yeah, but this is the thing, though, is that if you are going to go left high kick, I would have liked, and you get a step up left high kick, it's either the right cross or the right low kick that I would have liked to right. see right after. But, again, I'm not... I'm not his corner. They didn't but drill it. It's though, not like, that's the thing. I wanted to get into this a little bit. Sorry, go on, David. Sorry. No, I just want to say it's interesting to say that because I feel like Paulo was trying to land those shots, but Adesanya would move too quickly. And it was almost like yeah, before yeah. he could even move. after the, He was a ghost. Yeah, no, even, you're right, David. Sorry to interrupt. But even after that leg kick, that, leg, that left high kick, uh, Adesanya still took the position back once uh, Costa tried to march forward. Yeah, so I, 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 just to add on to on, on to that, I think that there were moments of success for Paulo Costa in this fight, but they were fleeting, right? Mm. There were individual moments, like those two body kicks in yeah, the first round and that head kick. Um, there were that fleeting success, I think, obviously easier said than done. But um, I would have liked to have seen Paulo Costa f uh, follow up on that a couple of, in a couple of ways. Number one, Kick the legs, and if you don't land, swarm afterwards, right? Try to do whatever you can to get, uh, whatever you can. Use your presence, get Adesanya behind that black line. Even if he's, you know, I think probably if he could, I don't know that he would have had the sophisticated uh, ability to cut the cage. And How much do you it. think, though, it was a cardio thing where he's trying to kind conserve? of... Conserve? That, that, see, that could, be, could have been a calculation, nice. right? But honestly, like, this is obviously retrospect, but... Any to get the black I, I don't even think that would have been enough personally. That's, I think that's what I'm saying, Stefano. Right? Just quickly, sorry to cut you off, but go did you it, see did you see Adesanya get cut off? Like there was like a couple of moments where um Costa I, I had him back up position. against the cage. Sorry, go on. Oh, I, I don't think, even think he was no, cut off. I think I think he did a, a very deft job of there's that one time exactly, where Costa had him. Man, he's then, levels above. Yeah. Like man, no, like, because there was but, one time Costa had him cut off because Israel Asanya made a mistake. So I want to say three minutes into the first, right? Uh, three minutes into the first, Izzy throws is going to commit with this, with a rear kick to the legs. And it just doesn't happen for him. He, he misses and his back is turned. And Costa, for lack of a better word, bum rushes him up against the fence. And Izzy is flattened, flattened up against the cage. His stance is flattened up against the cage. And what, and Costa goes with this not, not set up naked body kick and it's it's like buddy <laughs> you know yeah. that's not gonna get that's not gonna get the biscuits in the basket here, <laughs> you know <laughs> um well, man, put it this way though like and this is the tough part because once again we've all been in Barachina's shoes where you're up against like a, just a superior striker and you're like how do i get close to this guy just so i can do something because if you can't pick up yeah, get close <laughs> Sorry, that was Chael Sonnen. <laughs> Hilarious. Um, I, I, I just felt like he would try and do different things, but it was almost like Adesanya, as I said, was just like a step ahead. Um, recognized all of it. Yeah, he just recognized all of it, and it was just a little bit quicker. So, yeah. like, okay, now I remember the point. It, it's kind of like... Uh, even the way the fight went, um, or the fight started, I, I felt like Paulo Costa did what you're supposed to do, like not get excited. What would you tell a fighter who's fighting Adesanya? Don't rush him. Don't run in straight lines, because that's not going to work. Watch what he does. In fact, you would even look at the Romero fights and try to copy some of the things like Romero did a little bit in terms of like you don't want to get pieced up if you don't want to get pieced up at least copy a little bit of what romero did and i the opposite was... route well, if you're gonna fight I, out of sonia because i was just gonna ask you guys if because for me when i look at this division i see a division that um is and i could be wrong i see a division that's primed for out to just rule over i think he's gonna clean it out i don't think there's a fighter no disrespect to jared Cannonier, jack hermanson some of the great darren till some of the great talents we we have in um uh, at 185 I don't see I don't see somebody who has the tools to beat him. Yeah. So if you guys had to conceivably come up with a, a you know, 
You're in you're an EA UFC. And Somebody just moved down from light heavyweight and just try and oh, try and see what you can brother, do. That's, brother, that's not the answer. <laughs> try. Somebody just try. About this later. You know what? You know, about this later? Elite division. I think I think uh, Steve Wonderboy has some for him. Really, yeah, no, really really think... think... no. What, 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 what division no. is Wonderboy? One seventy. One seventy. Well, let's see what happens. What he has left in the tank? Yeah, yeah, no. But I think stylistic. I, I sorry, think David, style, stylistically, that is perfectly made for Adesanya because, like, that, like, bouncing up and, like, bouncing in and out, like, come on, man. Like, you're basically giving him the range to play with at, at that point. Like, yeah, um, fair enough. Fair enough. I, so that, that lead leg, he's going to be punishing it. I, I'd like to see, I'd like to see Adesanya not against a really good matador. I'd like to see him against a really good bull. No, so I was like, going to say, like, that's why somebody moved down. Like, somebody who has power, like, move down. No, I actually agree with Jeremy. I think the perfect matchup would actually be somebody, like, either... Um, directly above. Directly above. I know. Yeah. I just don't see any anyone to do it. Because, like, look, I, 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 hypothetically, I agree with you if there was that guy. But, somebody I mean, who's powerful. Jan, powerful. Jan, Jan no, to, I actually agree. I think a Jan, a Stipe would make sense. But somebody who has the power advantage... Like David, Stipe, how much does Jan weigh? 205? Like, walking around? No, no, no. Walk, like, like no. What do you would go into a fight? How much does it weigh? Probably 215, 220? Probably more than that. He's yeah. a Somebody who's going to match his height. A big advantage he has is that he's taller than everybody. But somebody who's as tall as him, as, tall as him, as strong as him. Um, but this is why the John Jones fight was uh, was getting a lot of people. Jones would have been interesting. You know, like, yeah. because John Jones can go to the grappling. He's got a legendary chin. And he's not going to be easily swayed by these feints and face because he's seen it all. So, I mean, he but like for he's out of Sanya, man. I don't know if he's a seen a striker like Adesanya. With all I, think, I personally think Jones would beat would beat uh, Adesanya. Maybe. Maybe. But like I, again, we're getting ahead of ourselves, right? All we know is for all we know, Darren Till could come in there, hit him with a, a stepping elbow, and you, know, you know, good night, Irene. Right? Um, wow, it's, it's fine. Cool. Anything can happen. Right, it's, it's good. good night, Irene. <laughs> you, you know, you know what I think would be, and I know you guys are going to take on bridge with this, but I think in his prime, do you know who would have been an interesting stylistic test for Adesanya, based on the fact that he's really good at cutting off the cage, throws a nice double right straight to pressure people to the fence, and has grappling credentials that are like out, out of this world. A prime Chris Weidman. I would, would not current Chris Weidman before you get on me. Current Chris Weidman would get pieced up, but maybe like Chris Weidman around the uh, the Anderson yeah. Silva. I, I don't I don't mind that actually. Yeah, yeah that, that would actually kind of make sense. You know, yeah. like like a like a super freak wrestler who can also like hang with the striking. You know, like that maybe would make submissions sense. Submissions as well. Plus submissions, plus submissions. But you know what? We can't even say that because it's never even gone in that direction. Um, in, 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 it's never even gone to the point where we were like, how good are Adesanya's like BJJ skills? Um, and that's the thing, he doesn't need to, right? He even even in, he, he's shown in brief flashes in like, let, let's say the Brunson fight and um, I forget his UFC debut fight against uh, that uh, gentleman. Uh, it's McClellan. Not, McClellan. No, it wasn't him. It was someone else. But it's not, it's not important. Basically, what, what I was saying is I have seen – we don't know what his jiu-jitsu is like, but I know that he's been training it for over a decade, and I know that his wrestling defense looks sophisticated. But the thing is, if your footwork's that good, it doesn't even matter. You don't need. But see, you don't I've, need wrestling. I've defense. been saying this, and I've said it off camera. I've said it on camera. I've said it on air, off air. Say it again for the people in the back. Mm -hmm. The first, if you're a striker, the first line of takedown defense is your movement. <laughs> it's not your takedown. Breach. Uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, Someone someone says this this saying all the time. Uh, a, a speck of uh, prevention is better than a pound of cure or something like that. Yeah, yeah an ounce of prevention. Yeah, 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 an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure. And the ounce of prevention in MMA for getting taken down, and this is where a lot of strikers of, of past were failing because they had that traditional Muay Thai style, was they weren't using their movement. Yeah, but you know what? Also, Michael, just to, sorry to cut you off, but like, no, how many, and, and shouts out to Toronto legend Elias Teodaro. But how many times have we seen fighters who move a lot, but they're not active or they're not doing much in between moving? You know what I mean? Adis like Stefano said, Adesanya is fainting, getting you like worried about what he's gonna do next, making you think, okay, the only way I'm gonna get this guy is if I get close to him, rush him, grapple him. And the I can't second you do close. Sorry, I had to say it. <laughs> yeah, man, like no, I just think like, yeah, it, it was truly special. Um, and personally, I actually 
Paulo Costa actually made a fan of me, similar to the Tiago Santos fight, um, because I thought, as I said, there's certain things he did okay. Um, I thought the buildup for the fight was hilarious. I actually think this is one of the fight few fights that I've seen somebody get in Adesanya's head uh, a little I bit. Think because Costa won the the battle of the words, to be honest. That was, yeah. He was hilarious, man. He was so funny. He was so funny. And the Israel Rad- Runner Sanya video. Come on, man. That's so funny. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, I, I I just think like, yeah, to uh, Stefano's point, it's gonna be a long time till somebody has at least like the striking like capabilities to even match him. Because if not, you you're just gonna need to be a super freak wrestler. All okay, right, I'm not saying enjoy much. your throne, King Adesanya. Well, again, 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 you know, you I I mean, I'm with you guys. I'm on the boat. Um, but you never know, right? Never like know. Marvin Vittori, and Marvin Vittori looked real good against him the first time. Then he call out uh Kanier, yeah, yeah. who, who like a by the way, has a fight coming up. Fight would be tough, but he would win that one. Man, I'm just saying, like Marvin Vittori, I get it, like he beat him already, but you well, know, the first fight it was it was semi competitive, right? What happens if Marvin Vittori gets another different out of Sonya? As much as I do like Marvin Vittori, and I'm a fellow Italian. Um, I'd bump the brakes on Vittorio. No, no, I'm not. I'm not saying yeah, Vittorio's gonna be him outright, but I'm just saying we never know, right? It's true. Right. There's always a confounding third variable. We all thought that potentially confounding third variable that can lead to defeat that we don't see. You know, like Ronda Rousey. Dude. You know, uh, I, but I, we I all put, thought she I, was invincible. I put the house on. I, did I tell the story on air about how yeah, I put the it, house on? Tell us, tell us on, on Holly Holm. I, we'll save it for story time. We'll save it for story. So really quickly, I wanted to say, and this is a point that I think David could probably lend us a bit of. Uh, First of all, David, are you guys from the same city? Are you guys both from London? Oh, my God. My God. Yeah, no. I can't believe I haven't even made this point. And also, the biggest the biggest thing for me about Adesanya is, not, is that he is the most, as a Nigerian, obviously, I'm biased. But, hey, who isn't? Um, never, when he was speaking to the camera yesterday, I've never felt more connected with the sport. I hate the sport of UFC. With... Uh, with an MMA fighter than ever, uh, really, because uh, I don't know. I just feel like he speaks to something greater. I- I've made this point so many times before, and I'm probably not the only one making the point, but I-, I think that it just goes to show that if you give Nigerians, or not even Nigerians, let's take nationality out of it, but you give some people from certain parts of the world the same opportunities and resources you'd be surprised where, like, the world champions are going to come from. That's all I'm going to say. Because but you know what? I, 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 thir- I thoroughly agree, yeah. and I think with Adesanya coming, you know, he's going to Nigeria. He's investing in his community. He's setting up gyms. He's helping train the young kids there, and that's what I wanted to say. I want to get David's take on this. Man, this is exciting. Like, yeah. the, the talent that we could see coming out of Nigeria, especially with a potential economic boom in, in, in the future, and especially with, you know, a lot of people who... Are, are, you know, hungry for competition. Not you know? Future, uh, man, Nigeria, a lot of people, I ain't gonna do like right Google, now. Do right Google, now. Man. Do you Googles, man. Like, this is, there's a reason why I'm so, I think it says a lot that you have Akeem Dawodu, who are, we can talk about later. You got Kamaru Sadiq, Usman. So, uh, Kamaru Usman, and now you got, um, what you call it, Israel Adesanya. These are and like... Sadiq Yusuf, too, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are not, like, it's not a shock, and it's not an accident. Like, I've been said, like, there's so much talent out there that just needs to be tapped into, and I'm but so... But you know what? I gotta give the UFC it's credit. It's exciting. I gotta give the UFC credit, because the UFC's a lot of things, and we, we get on the UFC. We're not shy about getting on the UFC, um, or Bellator, or any of these organizations when they do fall flat on their face, but the one thing the UFC did really well was they made a commitment to international expansion. Sure. They made a commitment. And you're I mean, starting show in Africa. They haven't done a show in Africa yet. And I feel like a lot of that international expansion stuff is like a little, with all due respect, a little overblown. Okay, um, but, but they set up a UFC PI in China, though. That, that, that that's is... great. That's great. That's amazing. I mean, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, no, we can talk about it off air. But yeah, I would like <laughs> to see whether. Talk about, there's we're, we're talking like about a, China's terrible a, crimes against humanity? <laughs> no, no. I mean, like, whether there's been like an increase in terms of like high quality 
Chinese fighters, like arguably, uh, since then. Maybe like with like Li Zhang, but it's going to take time, man. I think something like that, an, an investment like that in young fighters, is and, something and that it's takes a culture change with yeah. China too, because China, they've been very China, in China, the China has high level kickboxers. I'll yeah. say that China has China has um, a lot of Sonder guys. Yeah, yeah, that are equivalent to the best Muay Thai guys. Like China and and Thailand and Japan have a bit of rivalry in in, mm. in the Far East Asia for like who has. The best style of Sanda with uh, China with Sanda, Japan with their more kind of Kyokushin and uh, influenced fighters, and then um, Thailand with Muay Thai. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, I think I think that's just gonna be something that it's gonna be a generational thing. We're not gonna see those high level Chinese fighters until maybe they, they have ten to cross over, road. right? They have to cross over. Even still, we have not... Song Yadong. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah Song Yadong, Willy Zhang, um, a couple of other guys. The leech, Li, Li Jinping. Li Zhang Yang, yeah, exactly, yeah. And, but and, and what I was going to say, a lot of them are getting gobbled up by one championship too, right? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, there's some good Chinese, there's some good fight, Asian fighters. There are a lot of good Asian fighters in the NFC. Um, but no, what I was going to say is, um, yeah, we need a UFC PI in Nigeria or in Africa or somewhere like that because it's just, I think it's the next step. Um, and once again, Nigeria is the same population pretty much as America or Brazil, pretty much. It's got. How like many a, people does Nigeria have, David? Uh, on paper, two hundred million on paper, Ooh. but that doesn't count like people like me who are not like in Nigeria. So you can just imagine how many night like once again, this is a culture that doesn't know anything about MMA. So if you can tap even just a little bit into that, like the UFC is going to make some serious money, like some serious, like it could be really big because Nigerians do not play, and that's why the ch- that not Chelsea and. Uh, Colby Covington thing was so frustrating because it's kind of like y- you don't know anything about that place and like, you're just running your mouth. But for all you know, your taxi driver, your barber, your like you know your wrestling coach, anybody you know could be Nigerian, and you're just playing around with like people's culture and where they're from. But what? Well, he's a hack. Another day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can't take anything that men says seriously. That's for sure. That's for sure. Um. So. You guys want to move on to the Coco, the Cobain? Yeah, yeah. Because uh, that was, man, I, I'm glad we covered that as much as we did. Because, yeah, that was, I, I feel like we're, uh, I feel like we're in the gears of history. Like, I really feel yeah, like this yeah. is, this, this is probably what it felt like. I, I'm going to say it. It's, 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 it kind of feels like what it was like to witness George St. Pierre's reign. Or, except, except for me, George St. Pierre's reign was like, I had such an emotional attachment to it because yeah, he's being Canadian that, like, mm-hmm. I feel like I couldn't even enjoy any, I couldn't enjoy any of George St. Pierre's fights because I'd have a mini panic attack during them all, all the time. Cause, like, <laughs> I know? mean, I mean, the yeah. comparable, like, a, a lot of people compare him to Anderson Silva and with good reason, but that's the comparable, right? When Maybe. Anderson Silva was going. Right. Sure. Yeah. Sure. I'll, I'll say he's more impressive because he's doing it. He's I'll, I'll say he's even up there with like with and this might be hype, but I'll say he's up there with like some of like the most popular like sports. And, and this is super hype, but sports icons of like the last few decades. You know what I mean? Like uh, uh, like in terms of like his hype. It, yeah, man, he's huge. I, I would say like watching his rise feels like a, watching Khabib. It feels like watching like I don't know. Uh, I would guess it would feel like watching like Lennox Lewis or like Mike Tyson or something. George St. Pierre. George St. Pierre, yeah. Not not don't forget about. George St. Pierre, eh? I wasn't I, I didn't grow up here, man, so I didn't watch that. But um it, it feels like you're watching history for sure. I definitely agree. All right. All right. Uh, right. let's move on to the Comey because we've already gotten like an hour in. Um and we got really Who the yeah, who the heck would have called this this co main event? I mean <laughs> Who the, I, I had I had Reyes walking away in the first two rounds. Oh. Remember, we were here, we were sitting here, and I I, 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 th- I was I was rated crown champion. Yeah, honestly, I like I didn't even pay attention to it because I just kind of said easy. Well, not easy, but I just kind of dismissively said win for Reyes. Yeah, like, yeah. like yeah. we're sitting here, and 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 I we're in the preview, and I'm like. Reyes has got the speed advantage, the power advantage. He slips well and everything, and here comes Jan. And and to Jan's credit, this is. Jan's I, no one talks about this, but Jan Blahovitz's career is a testament to perseverance, figuring it out, hard work, and che- tears into the gym. Because this Man, is a that guy that plucked on my heartstrings a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, like fig that whole figuring it out, like yo, that's real, bro. Like Man, yo, like you're mountain. not gonna get it in the first. Tr- I, I mean, I don't know his story. I don't know. I don't know much about Jan. We were talking about it. I don't know if it was before the show or just yeah. no. I think it was now. We were talking about, like, I didn't know too much about the middleweight. No, light heavyweight division. 
Like, so I don't know too much about Jan, but like I was like inspired by his performance. I didn't know who he was, and he and he came in and and did his thing. Yeah, he had to crawl before he walked, and he had those early stumbles. Man, he lost to a level to competition where I was ready to write him off. I was ready he, to he say he was one iota from being cut. This is the thing. He starts out the the his UFC journey two and four, two and four, right? And he he comes up through the mountain. He he figures it out. Does his thing and then gets knocked out by Tiago Santos. So everyone thinks, all right, you know what? It was a hell of a resurgence. Okay, but we know where he's at. Beats he beats uh, Luke Rockhold, then he beats Jock Ray, knocks out Corey Anderson, who was one way away, one win away from uh, title shot. from a title shot, and then you know it's kind of given the throwaway match. You know, no one no one really thinks he's gonna beat Dominic Reyes. Dominic Reyes just, knew, I mean, in my heart, beat John Jones, right? Like. You know, no one thinks he's going to win. We have Dominic Reyes running away. And finally, finally, after a long, arduous journey, it's almost Michael Bisping-like, where it's like, Man. finally, he made it, you know? And do you know what? It, it, not only is it Michael Bisping-like in that um, he beat Corey Anderson, who I believe, like, beat him before. If, yes. Not, yeah, like, uh, in his run-up to the title. So you can imagine overcoming that and feeling like, you know, your, this is your time kind of thing. Um, but I'm just looking at his resume, and it's so impressive if you actually, like, take it in. Like, Corey Anderson, uh, Luke Rockhold, Jack Ray. Like, these are all tough fights. Even the Tiago Santos. Like, that's a that's a tough fight, man. Like, I don't know. Real respect to him because I agree. I did not... I mean, I wouldn't say that I thought Dominic Reyes would dominate or anything like that, but... Um, yeah, no, I, I, I definitely know. thought it was going to be semi-competitive. That. Like, don't get yeah. me wrong. But I, 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 the point I'm trying to make, though, is that Dominic Reyes came in on a high. Like, he he, he went toe-to-toe with the, the GOAT, right? Yeah, John Jones. And so you're thinking, okay, you know, Dominic Reyes is going to come out. He's going to hit him in the second round. Um, It's going to be semi-competitive. And then he's going to call out John Jones, right? Yeah. Let's yeah. get the show on the road. That didn't happen. Blackowitz yeah, was patient, man. He was pa- yeah. that, that's what, what really impressed me in this fight. Blackowitz was patient. He waited for his moments. And usually, I thought um, in a southpaw orthodox matchup, usually you're going to have a lot more of that uh, right body kick and cross dynamic playing out. But Blackowitz was comboing into uh, a step up left body kick, sneaking yeah, right man. the arm, which in southpaw versus orthodox is not something you see often. No. But man, it paid dividends. That's, the thing that I, that's one thing I had written down in my notes was that, yeah, his left body kick was absolutely nasty. And he absolutely, like, battered Reyes uh, with that kick. But to the point where you could literally see, like, a welt on the side of his body. Um, in general, it just looked like, you know, even though Reyes, like, was had, like, pretty good movement, he just looked small, you know, like, compared to, 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 compared to Yan. Yan looked like he had way too much power for, for him. And... I don't know whether it's like a weight cutting thing for Riz or something, but like he didn't look like his previous fights. And yeah. Jan well, looked recently, like... Jan's been turning back the clock to his KSW days where he Jan had a lot of power, a True. lot of power. Yeah, and, he looked crazy powerful yesterday. Yeah, and he he just been, and I, I wonder because you know the the ending sequence, Jan. What started it out, I mean, it was a beginning of the end for a long time, but what really started the ending sequence was that left hook. So I wonder if. Reyes was subconsciously keeping his arm low to kind of nurse that body, the, the damage of the body kick to that left side. I wonder. I'm, you know, speculative, speculative. Conjecture, conjecture. But, you know, that's the ending sequence. Left hook, Dominic Reyes goes down, and it's a fait accompli, right? A couple of ground. I, I, w- I wanted to ask you guys because I called this wrong. I'm like, yeah, if, I was if, I'm like, if Jan is going to win, he's going to have to crowd him to the fence, right? And either force it into grappling range or put in some work while he crouches into the fence, or potentially somehow get Reyes to move forward on those straight line charges, which worked well in like the John Jones fight, but they worked well as kind of like um, as a small part of an overall game plan, kind of like a surprise. Like you've been chasing me around and uh, I've been punishing you for it. Okay, now as soon as we stand still, boom, I'm coming forward. I thought if he could draw those out, he could punish him, but that wasn't what happened. And for whatever reason, correct me if I'm wrong, but. Did you guys? Reyes didn't look very fleet of foot in this fight. He didn't. No, he no. didn't look as mobile as in the John Jones I mean, fight. And I don't know. I'd have to go back and rewatch it and see why that is. But 
What, what, what did you guys take away from that? No, I, I was absolutely shocked. I was even making – we were watching the fight together, me yeah. and you and Jeremy, and I was saying like – David, you got to come do that. <laughs> okay. Come get, get your anus to Toronto and watch with All me. Right. Uh, but, yeah, no, I was saying like he's not slipping anything like he usually does. Like like the OSP fight, this guy couldn't, couldn't be touched, right? And, you know, it's OSP, right? But it, the whole point I'm trying to make or, is – Well, first three rounds of the John Jones fight as well, right? Yeah, John Jones um, – Chris Weidman, there was a lot of fights where Reyes just looks like the other guys are moving in quicksand. And in this fight, he's covering up, right? Granted, well, well, but But that's not the A game. That's not what he does, right? And it's like, whoa, hold on a second. He's not moving his feet the way he usually does. He's not. There was something Moving his feet in which scenarios? Well, like which scenarios would you have wanted him to move his feet? Because to me, it seemed like. He was overpowered, but I didn't translate that to him not moving his feet. Like, well, explain, elaborate, elaborate. Yeah, elaborate. Basically, what I was expecting. Usual Reyes' game is that he'll hit you with a straight, slip your right cross, that because he's a southpaw, slip your right cross to the outside hand, deep step, and then hit you with that straight again. And yeah. it wasn't there that night, last night. But um, did, another not, thing. Well, not just that, but. You think Jan has I something think, to do with that? Well, yeah, sure. no, that's, that's exactly like, what I'm so saying. Going. No, I, I was just going to say that Reyes in the usual Dominic Reyes fight, like think of the John Jones fight as a perfect example. The first three rounds of it, John Jones is chasing him around the octagon. Yeah, right? he gets sure. you, he baits you into chasing him, and then as you come forward, he cuts an angle on you, and boom, here comes that yeah. straight. He'll That's he'll it. circle, he'll circle, get you to throw your your um your right cross at him, and. He, uh, he steps, comes, he, yeah, he, he'll probably circle. the best deep step in the game. Yeah, yeah. What he does, uh, one of his the ways he makes his bread is he'll circle to that right, uh, to your to your right, right? So where your strong side is, circle to your right, and that Which is suicide, yeah. but he does it. But he, well, he does it because he's ready for it. He's yeah. ready for you to throw that cross, and then he just takes a step back, like a little step away from it, and then throws his left cross over top of it, right? Oh. So he tr- well, didn't look as coordinated last night is what you're saying. Yeah, no, yeah. no. And that's the thing. It's like, Sometimes, like, a Dominic Cruz is better if he can get, uh, for example, Dominic Cruz was better if he could get you to chase. Mm-hmm. And right? maybe also, he's right the outside, like, bump, bump, you come forward and he cuts an angle, right? But yeah, no, 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 I completely agree. I just wanted to add that, yeah, I, I felt like um, it was like that because um, for this fight, it looked like Do- uh, Dominic Cruz, Dominic Reyes, or <laughs> Reyes had to be the aggressor um, as opposed to Jan which was weird anyway, but because he had to be the aggressor, I feel like maybe that's why um, he wasn't able to look as fast and slip as well as in previous fights because he kept getting caught as opposed to, you know, when the other person is leading the dance, then he can be the person countering. I felt like Jan was playing the role of counterer and Reyes was playing the role of aggressor and um, every time Yan would try to counter, he would hit Reyes, which eventually got Reyes super um, gun shy and made him not want to strike as much. Um, which Yan just pretty much like, yeah, that that was all she wrote after that. But yeah, no, I, I thought I, I agree. I think it was because in previous fights, like John Jones um, and even other fights, like I feel like his he uses his, but I feel like his movement wasn't even that bad. I, I just think like the tempo of the fight made it look made him look bad as opposed to you know he was doing something wrong and Jan just has power in general yeah it's weird because Jan never like you what UFC Jan and KSW and I always say this was like it Jan was a power puncher in KSW at least to, to my memory he was he was more of a, a power guy Polish power guy yeah Polish power <laughs> right, that's his new nickname. I don't care what's oh, his God. his old nickname is. His new right now his current nickname is Prince of Sesson or something like that. Prince of Sesson. That's a pretty cool nickname. It's, I, I, I'm just saying. I am Prince of. Wait, wait, wait. Sorry. You turned on my mic. You were doing something. I, I, I was. Mike. To, I, my bad. My bad. Mike. I was like, why is it? Why am I not hearing him? But yeah, no. Uh, his old nickname was Prince of Sesson, and now his it should be Polish Power. I'm sorry. Polish power, Prince of Sesson. Here I come. If I was on the front lines during World War II, all right, I would right. punch back all those German tanks. They wouldn't have made it to Moscow, let me tell you. 
You're canceled. <laughs> <laughs> is that offensive? Is that really offensive? No, no. I, just, it like, I offensive. think that was a, but that was on the line. That was good. No, I'm was sorry. Good. I'm sorry. You guys don't, under, don't appreciate it, it, history. It, it, was, maybe, it wasn't offensive. Maybe if you guys appreciated history and find it funny, it's okay. Uh, you guys are more into football, spicy, you guys throwing, to talk throwing, about? throwing pig skins into peach baskets. That's bad. Oh. All right. What? <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Any <laughs> other <laughs> fights you guys want to talk about? What? Bad. Okay, we got we gotta keep yeah we gotta truck a log here because like okay um I quickly want to touch on Kai Car France versus Brandon Royville because we got they got a new star in this Brandon Royville kid because remember last fight um, I missed a lot of this fight for <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, but last fight um Brandon Royville um uh, Brandon Royville I uh, kind of gave that antidote at least I think it was him um I could be wrong please correct me in the comments like you usually do um about Brandon Royville who won. Who won his debut and then was like, "Oh, I gotta go to work right after." Remember, that was. Oh yeah, was that him? Yeah, that was him, to my knowledge. And you know, he comes out here against Kai Car France, and that you know, this is Kai Car France's. This is supposed to be like the clean sweep of city kickboxing because they already had, they were already two and zero earlier in the night, and then Kai Car France comes out, and it looks like it's gonna go his way early with with that overhand right yeah. over the top, and Brandon Royville kind of does the chicken dance. And then does a spinning back elbow to and, get himself back. And fight completely changed. And that's yeah. And after that, fight was over. The yeah. fight was different. Yeah. No, I mean, golly, like, yo, just a prayer. Just he just. I. I mean, I don't know. Maybe my lack of knowledge missed how calculated it was. But to me, it seemed like a shot in the dark. Like, yo, I'm going down, and I see him coming towards me. Let me just throw this quick little spinning backing, and then a controversial kind of knee to the face on when his knee was down. But I mean, still, like, yo, the way the way uh, the fight just turned completely after that. Like, it's not like uh, Car France was out of it, but was definitely more hesitant on to the back uh, fight. The yeah, dynamic changed exactly. Yeah. The dynamic changed, and. Uh, and by the way, that step in knee that Brandon Royville was employing after that, uh, he would do a step in knee throw, throw his stri- his jab right after, and then you know switch stances off of that because it was technically a straight, but it turned into a jab because of the step in knee. Hmm. But it was you know he he look the striking. I'm not gonna lie, it's not the prettiest thing, right? But it was still one of those things where Kai Car France again, like Jeremy said, not out of it, but was. Uh, definitely perplexed by by Brandon Royville. Honestly, though, I like the grappling in this one more than I like the striking. Even though you had that big uh, exchange in, early in the fight, I like the grappling. The grappling, part was, of the grappling was, was the pace was so quick. Like that's the kind of grappling like new UFC fans kind of want to see. Like not like the I mean like not to hate on your your guys' sport or whatever, but like like I don't want to see like the friggin' like. Okay, let me get this person. Let me get this leverage. Like, yeah, okay, I get that you're trying to accomplish something, but like the pace of this one was so awesome. Like yeah, when how like, he was trying to like pull out of his he had his arm cut in uh uh the car guard. Yeah, and, and and car of France was trying to pull out of it and then you see them kind of like, you know, switching here and then now I'm on top and now he's on top, but like now we're in different positions. Like that's kind of like exciting. Uh, Jeremy, as a guy, as a guy personally who makes his bread as a boring ass leg humper, I'm deeply <laughs> offended. <laughs> You're talking to a boring fighter. Right? I know. I'm sorry. Like the shit is like you kind of when you when you don't know exactly what they're trying to get accomplished, you kind of like you get out of it. Like that fight we saw last time with the two females who were just uh like just up against the cage. Like that one was damn fall fell asleep there. Wait, hold one. on. The fight that we saw with the two females that were up against the cage. I can't remember. Thank their you names. for that. Thank you for that eloquent no, I know and precise yeah, yeah, description. Uh... No, hold on, let me make fun of Jeremy. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> He's talking about Kuniskaya versus. Uh... Can you just make? Let me make fun of Jeremy sure, for five sure, seconds no, before you on. be Mister Like. Watch, well, actually, gonna, you know, watch. He's gonna freaking. No, you can. No, come on, Stefano. You you can even say sometimes stuff like striking is more. It's, di- it's, it's more, more dynamic. I'm not disagreeing more with you. I just wanted to... than, I just then, want, no, I know. Then judo and and jujitsu. Sometimes, dude, I, I've I, I agree. I've had fights. I have had personally had fights that are better than Nyquil. Like they are better than <laughs> Nyquil. <laughs> Nyquil is dangerous. Go watch my fight with um, what's his name, Cody Ford. If you guys want to, you guys want to catch some Z's. Go watch my fight with Cody <laughs> Ford. Actually, there were some cool judo throws in that. So, just most of the fight with Cody Ford. <laughs> no, but you know what? That's flyweight for you, though. That's flyweight for you because. 
Yeah, and it's just who are Dana White trying to cancel the flyweight division? Well, are you nuts? Are you the, insane? The reason why he's trying to cancel MMA. it though is because for whatever reason they can't get they can't get asses in the seats right now, and I think it's more I so on why. the UFC. Yeah, dude, if but, you're if you're if you like if you're you have Demetrius Johnson, and this is not my. Uh, full disclosure, this is not my talking point, but I just agree with it. I, you know, my man Jack Slack may have uh, may have said this before me, so credit where credit's due. But he has a point, right? Um, you have Demetrius Johnson, and you're throwing in challengers that you haven't built up. People want to know the stakes behind a fight. No, right? that's and exactly the yeah, point. And if these flyweight fighters are fighting on undercard after undercard on early prelims, and then all of a sudden it's like, hey, now you're going to fight Demetrius Johnson. Well, of course, there's not going to be a lot of attention behind the matchup, you dummies, because you haven't garnered any, you know, you haven't done. There were there were times when the UFC canceled 155 because they didn't think it would be an interesting division. You remember that? Yeah. That was a little before our time watching MMA, but point remains. They thought, no, these guys are too small. It's not entertaining. They canceled it. For a long time, the UFC didn't have a 135, 145 division because they're like, oh, this is boring. They're too small. Nobody's going to watch And then WEC it. comes along and yeah, proves everyone wrong, Exactly. Right? And the UFC now, like, the 145 is one of the... Premier, division. Premier divisions. That's the division where Conor McGregor made his name, right? Well, so I mean, it's it's doable. Don't don't you know? Not you particularly, but yeah. people out there who are saying, "Oh, flyweight, I'm just not interested." Don't tell me that. Y you can make. There's. It's not like there's not good fighters. It's not like there's not talent to be had. You got your Morenos, your Kai Car of Francis. But right? in fairness, though, I have to say, this, this is not this is not a UFC or an MMA problem. This is a every combat sport problem. You you know this in boxing, the lighter weight classes don't get talked about. Here's here's Roman Gonzalez for like nearly half a decade dominating, and and then he can't get he he can't he can barely get a thousand a six figure payday. It's right? it's, it's true, but mind you, I would say someone like Vasil Lomachenko yeah. is now a household name. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, an exception. Everybody, though. he is, he is. He's but an exception. I think because of the U boxing, it's a little different, uh, difficult. I think in Vas this day and age, Vasily, Vasily, Vasily Lomachenko is actually. Uh, kind of emerging as kind of like the Israel Adesanya of the lightweight division. I yeah, I, I completely agree. I, yeah, I would say. So um, I think that's why you can, he's an exception. But I have to agree with Michael. Like uh, the lighter weight classes are tougher to market, just because you know you don't. Uh, it's not like it's, too a, it's more of an exposure thing for me. I would I would say it's more so a thing where look the theory of relativity makes sense in in promotion as well in the sense that like i need to see someone in rivalry relative to someone else right uh -huh. so if i'm if i'm trying to promote somebody i want to build up the person that he or she will be facing yes just as much and the problem with dj was that here you have this guy who is so incredibly exceedingly a once in a lifetime generational talent that the problem is it's hard to believably make it seem like this other person that's there is going to kick this person is going to kick DJ's ass. Well, that's, that's why you build up the content. And I think we're on the same, we're on the exact same I'm not going to disagree with you because we're on the exact same point here. And that's why the UFC needed to build up uh, opposing talents. Cause yeah, it's not that it's, I, I fundamentally disagree with the point that they're too small because they're not because the UFC was able to, I've heard that argument again and again. And now we have stars at 55, 45 and 35 that are like huge names, right? From your Cejudo's to your Jose Aldo's to your Peter Jan's. Like these are big names now in the sport, right? These are marquee divisions. Um, so I think an, one, another th interesting thing about 125 as well, it's one of the few divisions where the UFC doesn't even have close to a monopoly on the talent that's out there. And I'll give you some examples off the top of my dome. Horagushi? Kyoji Horiguchi, who I thought was going to be the best test for um, Demetrius Johnson before Cejudo ended up uh, beating him. Kaya Sakura over in Risen is an animal. He beat Kyoji Horiguchi. Beast. Um, some of the best karate I've oh, seen. I'd like to see DJ come back and get a second chance. Hell yeah. This, but... What the hell are you doing at one, DJ? Like, come on. As much as I, sorry, David, as much as, as much as, you know, I don't want to see him fighting, you know, no name fighters from Team Lakai. It just doesn't interest me. And also, Menel, guys like Manel Cape, right? Manel Cape's promi a promising prospect. The UFC signed him recently, I think at 135, but the names are out there. The names uh, are out there. Um, I don't know about that, man. I, I, I'm going to be honest with you and say that even though I do agree that, you know, there's probably a little bit more skill in the fly, in the lighter divisions than people give them credit for, I think, I, I actually agree that in general, people like the heavier divisions more. And I think... That wait, then why is 155 the marquee division right well, now? Well, I will say, though, that the guy... One, 155 back in the day and 155 now, the guys look completely different. 
That's true. I I mean, I, I would if I had if you put a gun to my head and said pick a side, David or you know, David or Steph, I would probably lean more on the side of it's a it's a promotion thing. But then again, I'm a communications major. I believe promotion can solve everything. <laughs> <laughs> no biases biases on the table. Um but I I think there is something to be said though for the fact that like you have to make it seem like this guy is a believable badass. And unfortunately, I think it's more so on the fact that the UFC does not promote their guys like that. Whereas you get one championship and you know, we're gonna talk about it again. One championship can promote they can promote literally set like asphalt on the street I, as being a legit championship I, contender. I would say, I would say, mind you, one championship has the opposite problem. Like Pride hit the sweet spot for promotion. I think one one championship, and sorry, David, I know I'm about to uh, insult the people who give you your dough. Uh, David here is, you know, so he's what? not. He we found out recently that he's a mole. He is being paid by one championship <laughs> to infiltrate our podcast and spread <laughs> propaganda from East Asia. Just but. <laughs> I think one championship's big uh, promotional fault is that they're everyone. They, they don't understand like that. There's degrees of variation. Oh, yeah. and honestly, it's like everyone. It's like everyone's. It's the most interesting matchup in the world. He's fighting. He's the best. He's ten hundred thousand championships, and he's gonna fight Kai Asakura <laughs> for the belt. And it's the greatest thing in the like. Sorry. Uh, everyone, when everyone's a world champion, no one is, right? Yeah. Like, for them, it's like Kobe Northcutt is a world championship. Sage Northcutt's sister. It's like, didn't she just win a couple of kata competitions? You know? <laughs> like, it's just, yeah. But, sorry, I don't know how I got onto that. No, no, I, I mean, it's fair enough. I just think that we got, like, Brandon Roybal. I think he's this John Everyman who fights at 125 and is this fun and exciting. And he just beat Kai Car France, who's a, who's a legit contender at flyweight. Um, so... You know, give I, I mean, give him uh, I I don't know who to give him, but give him somebody in the top five. Moreno. Moreno? Yeah, why not? Why not? Who's who's fighting for the belt next against? Oh, Cody Garbrandt. That's right. Yeah, you know what? I now that I'm thinking about it, I don't actually hate the Cody Garbrandt move, even though I think Cody Garbrandt didn't deserve a title shot. I think in the meantime, you can kind of allow the division to build up some natural stars and gain some intrigue for some matchups against whoever wins that fight. Uh, you know what I mean? Well, the problem is, is like, who, who would you rather, like, let's go around the room. Would you rather see Askar Askarov, who probably was going to be next in line? Or would you rather see Cody Garbrandt fight Davis and Figueroa? Let's be, let's be. Yeah, honest. I think, I think we're all on the Garbrandt as far as just pure interest, even though the matchup makes zero sense. I'd still like to see, see, yeah, Garbrandt. And then, and then in the meantime, you build up your uh, Askar Askarovs and your Brendan Morenos and your Roy Vols and your Kai Kara Francis, right? You build them up, you you garner some attention to them, and this was on the main card, was it not? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. It, it, yeah. It's, that's 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 what you like got to do. And so it seems like they're learning their lesson a little bit. Um. I mean, d then again, it's Fight Island, right? <laughs> yeah. You've, yeah. For sure. I just I just think like, yeah, I'm biased about smaller divisions. Yeah. What you think we can't do the damn thing, David? You think we can't do the damn thing? Was not, um, no, was I just Holloway, think. Let me ask you this: Was Max Holloway not a bona fide star? But Max Holloway is also five eleven, who cuts like an exuberant amount of weight. Exuberant amount. You think of you think his weight cutting has something to do with his uh, popularity, or the fact that he is a killer on the mic who can cut a mean promo, he can cut a mean promo and delivers yeah. results? Yes, but also who the same cuts point? a promo on like on, in the smaller division? Henry Cejudo, King of Cringe. Apart from Henry Cejudo, TJ TJ Dillashaw. TJ Dillashaw, Dominic okay. Cruz. What about Dominic Cruz? Dominic Cruz, that's okay. a mean promo. But again, again but you're, uh, talking, you're talking mean about promo. Um, but Aljo, 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 Aljo. I love Aljo. I, love I, Aljo. I, I like Aljo. I, li I but like Aljo. The, but again, here's the thing: is that like a little bit of Al, a little bit of Joe. Got Aljo. Don't do okay. that. Don't like, say I mean, Peter Yan is it a, is a draw again. I, you said that as Stefano earlier. I was like, man, no. Peter Yan is not uh, unless you're like a hardcore MMA fan. Like you don't know who Peter Yan is. You're, you're you're speaking from a very North American centric perspective. I think if you were in Russia, you might feel differently. Maybe, maybe. Russia, dude. Russia, they covet their fighters, right? Like, yeah. there's Khabib might not have as much buzz over here, but in Russia, he's a god. Are, are you kidding? Khabib me? is huge. Buzz, no, no, no. Not. I, I'm saying not in in Russia. He's a god. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I think Yana as well, man. He, he's from. I don't know where he's from, but some tiny village in the Ural Mountains, maybe. Like it, over there, like man, this is their this is the one person they have. This is their champion. This is you know, yeah, it's but like that doesn't um, make him a global superstar, and that doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna sell a ton of PPVs just because one person is popular 
in like where they're from. I know I just made the whole argument about Adesanya and Nigerians earlier, so I'm literally contradicting myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just think Peter Yan has a way to go in all due respect. He's a great fighter. I love him. He's great. I don't love him, but he's uh, interesting to watch. But uh, I, I think, like, yeah, uh, TJ Dillashaw and Dominic Cruz are stars, though. So, I mean, I'm not going to hate Ultimately, David, like, I have my opinions, you have yours. What, the only thing that's going to uh, settle this is we got to wait and see. If a different if she does take a different approach, we'll have to wait and see uh, what the data shows us, right? Yeah. Or, or because honestly, I think that's the most honest way. And I personally, as a smaller weight fighter, hope that um, my because we both have our biases. Obviously, I genuinely hope that I'm correct and that people are not as you know so ignorant that they're just like, oh man, small, <laughs> me don't like. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you know what? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let's move on, because um, I, I really wanted I, I really want to talk about. Um, I think we gotta. Huh? Oh, go on, go on. Yeah, we're I, I want. We're, we're up against it. I just want to quickly talk about Hakim Dawudu because Dawudu. Be, that was I, a great I, fight. It was a. Great, that was a great fight. A start, a start the fight with like lower lower output, which is more of a more of a chess match. Like that was I thought it was riveting. I yeah. enjoyed that. Yeah. What was interesting? I have I wrote down a couple. The thoughts about this. Um, I like the front kicks from Hakeem. Um, uh, in general, I thought Zubera was so unorthodox because uh, I don't know, just like his style. He had a really weird, like on it, it, light on his feet, very, very karate like with that upright chest, yeah. that linear it, stance, and he's trying to find so, that cross counter over the top. Very karate. So right? frustrating. He was that like, in the first round, eh? That that counter right hand drawing out Dawudu and just boom. It was well, so I'm, good, I'm man. His right was money had, every single uh, time. Sorry, go on. No, I was just saying I found it interesting that the the probably Zubir Tukushov is probably the Tukugov. We're going to mispronounce it so many oh, times, I, all of us. You know why? It's, it's such a tongue twister. But Tukugov is probably the best um, best striker out of the Dagestani guys from AKA. Yes. Probably yeah. the best one. But because he's so good at it, he doesn't really – it seems like he didn't have a game plan besides hit you with the counter. No, but sure. you know the crazy part? No, I actually... He expected to get Dawudu out, out of that room. Coming from, because, yeah, I wrote, he had... He seemed so light on his feet that he had faster hands than Hakeem, which is saying a lot, because Hakeem is supposed to be like a uh, like a really high-level striker and a Muay Thai guy, but he had faster hands, um, he had better wrestling, um, but he just seemed so tentative... And he just didn't have because enough. He doesn't have out. the gas tank that the, the Islams and. But no, he didn't look tired though. Like even his movement. He, he, yeah, he slowed down. I agree with David. He slowed down, but he didn't look tired. I think I would credit that more his tentativeness to in the early rounds they were really trying to bait the other person out to land that counter. Like I'm gonna draw you out to make that mistake and counter you. And like the, a cool dynamic played out in the fight yeah. for young fighters out there. A couple of things I'd like to see you Dawa do in a fight. I'd like to see you. Uh, I like that. I like that. <laughs> I like that. I'm serious. That was serious. a good one. That was a good one. Um, as the fight went on, it sound, seemed like Dawudu was able to draw out that right hand a little more. And it's a principle of even if you do get hit, the exchange is over when I say the exchange is over. Yeah. Not on your terms. If you hit me, I'm not just going to be like, good, you got me. No, no, no. You can follow up. And Dawudu, even when he did get cracked with that nice one, too, there were a couple of times where, like, uh, Dawudu would uh, e either. Um, Zubair would land that cross or not, and Dawood would come back immediately with a one-two, and then um, the, the exchange would continue. Sometimes Dawood would initiate the exchange, he'd get countered, and then he'd come back again with that left hook to the body, low kick. Draw them out. Sometimes, young fighters, sometimes your opponent is most vulnerable after they've thrown. Take advantage of that moment, even if you get hit. If you're still there, start throwing. And how impressive was this takedown defense? Yeah, yeah. And that, that, was the big, that was the big one. For me... Uh, you're right. It was a chess match, so that's why I'm not speaking too much on it because this is more f so for the guys who actually know um, how to, you know, you know don't what I'm getting your, at. Don't sell yourself. No, but you're what I'm trying to know. get at, what I'm trying to get at is that I enjoyed this fight because I enjoyed seeing, you know, what's going to work, you know, what's going to land, what's going to move the needle, like how, like these guys, it kind of looked like these guys were a bad matchup for each other because... Uh, in the beginning, uh, for I think the first and second round, like it wasn't like it wasn't completely uh, Dawudu. 
It wasn't completely no, him. I'd say he lost like, the first round. Yeah, exactly. I would say he lost the first round as well. Yeah, like it wasn't completely him the entire way, but it was just cool to see, you know, how these guys, like, you know, just what would work, you know, uh, what would land, what wouldn't land, and stuff like that. So I enjoyed it. I definitely enjoyed it. A couple, a couple things I'd like to add about the matchup that I found interesting. Number one, the takedown defense, the style of takedown defense that Dawadu used, which I thought was really cool. Yeah, the inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like a frame, but. Um, with the the forearm, forearm kind of against the neck, and he'd use that to create uh, space. It was almost like like you're flexing your bicep. Picture it like that. And he was able to pull up the chin and kind of from there get to an underhook overhook position, lean hard on the overhook, and get distance. And he was able to defend not just the first attempt, but the second, third, and fourth attempt. And that might be something that tired out Zubair in the later rounds because it's ask 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 Mike. Uh, cause you know, when I'm going with Mike, this guy, Mike's got some great takedown offense. I have to get the fourth or fifth takedown attempt because he's just got those strong hips, but it is exhausting, man. When you don't get those first couple takedowns, you slow down a little bit physically, right? Even if you don't mentally break, you slow down. It's just natural. Um, so that was nice, and I thought the 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 trash talk in the fight was hilarious. Like, <laughs> let's effing go! I, I love and the rap. I would be like, oh be, this, be respectful, be, guys. Be respectful. Like, shut that. up. It's a fight. They're trying to be entertaining. There's what people are going to be talking about the next day. That's what the normies are going to talk about. Let them sell themselves. Be, don't cuss. Be respectful. What is this? Sunday school? Shut up. Wait, Do your job. Apparently, I life. saw on Twitter. Hold on, uh, Stefano, just to your rant. I saw on Twitter that it's part of the unified rules. They were actually not supposed to be swearing at your opponent. So he's just, oh. like, enforcing the rules. What is this? What is this? One of Michael Michael Asifo's Taekwondo competitions? Yeah. <laughs> Man. No, but yeah, man. Shouts out to Nigerians everywhere. But that was my last take. Was uh, <laughs> the, the world, why is he so mad? He looks really because he's mean Akeem. No, he I get it. I get the whole thing. But like, well, I, I, I think Akeem, you're like from that. Alberta. No, I'm joking. No, I, oh yeah, no, 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 no. Alberta's he's Alberta's a, got those boys. He's this angry Alberta's Nigerian play, gentleman. He, after the fight, he's like, well, you know, I wasn't completely satisfied with my yeah, performance, bud. Yeah. You know. Throw up a couple blue moons after the fight. game, you know. He did really. sound like he did sound like he was somewhere from the western part of Canada. Like really wanted to go to the finish there, bud. But yeah. you know, sometimes she goes, sometimes she doesn't go there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, pucks in deep. Pucks in deep. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, but you know what? I, I will say though, in the bigger context, I understand why he's mad because last week Kobe Covington says what he says about Nigerians, and Hakeem's looking to to, to really put out a great performance here, and. You know, what did, what did Kobe Covington say about Nigerians? Um, you, basically, it was directed at Kamaru Usman, but something, but like I can't, I, I don't I'm something about sending smoke signals yeah. to tribes or something, yeah. some nonsense. It was, oh, it was, wow. it was stupid, and it was, it was, it was stupid, racist, insensitive, and you know, here comes all the right wing MMA fans being like, "Oh, you're such a lip tart," but whatever. Okay, it's that those are things you just don't say. But anyway, the whole point is in the bigger context of it, Hakeem's trying to come out. And have this stand-up performance. And then after, get on the mic and say something. And he just... And I can understand that frustration of, like... Because you have it all planned. I always say this. I have it all planned out in my head, the post-fight, what I'm going to do after. Right? Because I'm, I think I'm going to win. I, I, I Another story. I remember there was a fight against us, an undefeated fighter that we got two weeks' notice. And I was... I said... Oh, I had so a, close to the mic. Or sorry. Tinny. Sorry. My bad. And I said... Wow, rookie mistake, you know. Can you tell I, I was in professional radio for a while? Um, well, there's also no snare in my headphones, so. <laughs> but I think the whole thing was is that, like, I always say it. Like, I had it planned in my mind. They were going to give me the mic. I was going to say something about respecting everybody. And, and you know, because I thought I was going to get booed. And blah, 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 right? And then the fight never happened. It was disappointing. <laughs> That's Hakeem, I feel like in that bigger context, the reason why he was so mad was because Zubair was not giving him the opportunity to have that standout performance. Mm -hmm. So by the time he's getting to that, you know, to that post fight where he's had it all planned out that this is what he wants to do, he's gonna and and then he's gonna say something about how Nigerians, you know, Nigerians forever, and you know. I, at least this is what I'm saying. Conjecture. It's conjecture. Let's get it, man. All I care about is, like, yo, that will do putting on for Nigerians. I want to know Nigerians, man. Um, and, yo, his tattoo, his black fist tattoo has to be up there with, like, the best yeah, tattoos your camera, in the game. Man, it's like... <laughs> like, man. Right, it's like, find them Skype. It's just there's a camera pointing to the sea. That looks like a... Uh, a camera where you'd see like a snuff film on, on the deep web, <laughs> you know, <laughs> what's going on? What is that? Wait, what? 
Oh, hold on. I think I know what it is. I, deep I, Web Snuff Film, David. Hilarious. Shouts out to the Deep Web. Right. I, oh, I, it's, I, it's large? It's yeah, large? it's enlarged. Hold on. I got it. I got Please it. Please stand by. Technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. Uh, hey, hey, David, I got to say, as much as I like the Black Fist tattoo and thought it was cool, the one on his opposite pack hey, is just hey, like, just the one that just said mean. Uh, yeah, mean, <laughs> like, not pain, mean, man. In, no, in like really cli- good. In clip art font, it said mean in like clip art font, dude. It's like, dude. All right, what is that? Ti- is that Times New Roman? Like, uh, yo, shout out to Hakeem. Yo, I, I was going to say, please, Hakeem, we want you on the Light Kick podcast. That's all I'm going to say. Please, You're both Canadian, you're Nigerian, you represent for, you know, black people. Anybody who knows Hakeem, yo, reach out to him. And yeah, please. Love- hey, you know, would this be a good time to uh, tell the good people of the Light Kick what, uh, no, what we have I- coming up? Let's finish the fights because Brad Riddell had a great fight, right? Well, I know we're just we're so deep into it right yeah, now, man. We are super like we're, we're gonna go like eight hours in. Yeah, okay, like okay, how start. long have we been going at it? We've been going at it for almost two hours. Man. All right, so I Brad Riddell yeah. had such. Let's wrap. Fight. Let's wrap. Let's okay. Brad Riddell look, look great. He's got a phenomenal left hook and jab combination. Anyone who anyone who jabs off the uh, uh, hooks off the jab is uh, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, Costa tried that and it didn't really go well for him. Oh no, you got to pair it together <laughs> with your expectation for the jab coming down the center, right? And yeah. Costa didn't even get close to landing the jab. I mean, yeah, no, I'm just, I'm just saying. Yeah, just but saying. I, you know, anyone who successfully but, pairs the left hook and the jab. Yeah. Um. Okay. Personal favorite of mine. Um. I just want to say kind of a little like I'm sorry and 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 I'm very sad to Diego Sanchez because we're that so was... sorry. That was rough. <laughs> Uncle Albert. Yeah. Can we stop? Can we stop? Yeah, Can we stop? No, I literally guys... have, in my notes, I have written here, not funny. I don't care about his win streak. <laughs> yeah, no, this is, this is starting to get to a point. David's like, notes, not funny, did not like, two out of ten. Would not no, be because, like, no, I, I'm they were you. even saying oh, he has, like, a four, he's on a four-fight win streak. I'm like, really, guys? Like, Who, really? He's on a win streak. Diego? No. He's, that... he's won three out of his last four. He's Diego three. has? Yeah. It's Dead? Three. Three out of his last four. I found that hard to believe because yes. really yeah. something oh, like that. No, 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 no. No, because he lost to Kiesa. He lost to. He, there was that whole beating he took against Iaquinta. Yeah. Um. The only one he won was the Michelle Pejera disqualification. Right. So like he, he beat Mickey Mickey Gall. Yeah, he beat Mickey. White. Yeah, no, he he's only lost one out of his like last four fights or something like that. They yeah. Just put some wicked stat, and I'm just like, guys, stop massaging the sites. Like, sorry, massaging the stats. Let's call it for what it is. Like, Yeah, it's embarrassing. You're yeah. letting a, a, a mentally ill person who's being exploited by a cult leader mm-hmm. fight in the UFC. A, a fraud. A fraud. A fraud. Interesting and John Madden beat him from pillar to post. Interesting Dude, that they had was... Stephen, Stephen Bonner there as uh, the, what's it called, as the, um, the corner this time. Um, and really like enough, he kind of was in the corner. He was in the corner as well. Yeah, yeah it, was the, it was the corner. And, 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 Where, was uh, Joshua, Joshua Fabia there as well? I didn't. I didn't see him. I think it was like a kid. It was like a teenage. It was like a teenager. It wasn't. Well, Joshua uh, Fabia looks like there. a man. Like, no, no, that's what I'm saying. He wasn't there. <laughs> man, no, it's just it's it's one. It's getting to the point where I'm I'm legitimately like it. I'm legitimately starting to get. It makes you feel uncomfortable, right? Yeah, like it's it's legitimately questioning why I like this sport sometimes. Like it's it's getting there. And, and you want to know another thing that makes me question? Sorry, go on, Jeremy. No, did you no, say no, go go go, please. I was gonna say, do you want to know another thing that makes me um, question? You know, this sport and why I like it. Uh, Jake Matthews is 26. Yeah, I mean, why does that make you question why you like it? Just because of the age discrepancy between the two? I'm 28. He's been in the UFC for time, like six years. Yeah, I mean that's now now nowadays I'd say people making their UFC runs tend to be a little bit older than that. So he's an exception rather than the rule. I mean, because we, we the, just the, had somebody on who started their career at what 14? Jake Congo? No, um, Nat Wondergirl. Yeah, that's different. That's Thailand. No, but again, that's, that's like a terrible system. Thailand has a terrible system of building up fighters. And as well. to her credit, she said she said as much. But you but know, how old yeah. is Diego, how old was Diego Sanchez when he started? Young, young, young as well. Like, but the whole point of the same, it's almost like you know that Spider-Man emoji uh, thing of like pointing, you know, like pointing it. Like I, I don't know. It, it, it gave me yeah, a weird we're vibe. Pointing at each other. That fight made me sad. I don't know. It made yeah. me sad. It made me sad. But the whole point I was trying to make about the young thing is that like this is kind of in a way starting to turn like this is where we had that like real kind of drunken bar fight argument about the about this sport versus versus fight. This is kind of like the NCAA in the sense where it's like you. Well, one kind of us of, was drunk. <laughs> yeah, but 
this is kind of like that argument where it's like, because this is a sport and you kind of want to start young and develop and build over time, you st- but at the same time, it is fighting. You get guys that, you know, shouldn't be in fights who are 20 and their brains are still developing yeah. into this competition-like atmosphere because this is how you're supposed to do it in sports. You get them at 20, 21. They develop for a couple of years, hit their athletic stride at 25, 26, and then have a prime for about five years. And then at 31, they start coming over the hill and then start to clang at 35. Yeah, this is how it works in sports. And unfortunately, well, fighting, fighting, I would say that uh, for whatever reason, I think because technique and individual choices do play such a big role in it, yeah. that decline tends to happen a little later. Like we still see fighters from 30 to 35 that are still very much in their prime. But again, they have to develop over that time. Over the time, yeah, because, you know, there's so much to consider. And I think one part of the, what will fix this, and I think we should really get into this another time as a specific discussion, uh, separate, because I'd love to have this as like a debate, but um, I think one of the things that's going to help over time is more development of best practices within MMA. Like in hockey, for instance, they don't allow contact to the head until you're a certain age. I, I don't, I don't remember exactly what it is, but like there's limits there. Right. And there's still skills you can develop in fighting without having co- severe contact to the head. Obviously it's more difficult to regulate because it's not one country you're coming out of. Right. It's many countries and there's many different, um, places that are developing talent. Some are going to have more ethical and less ethical practices. Yeah. But and not only to that, just, you know, comparing hockey to, or a really most sports to like something like combat sports, like boxing and, um, Muay Thai or, most striking sports, it, it, it's difficult because of the inherent risk with blows to the head exactly. uh, and the role that concussion plays on like brain development. Like it, it's just, sure. it's, I agree with you. Like it would be great to have best practices, especially for things like even like youth BJJ, like that would make sense. Cause it's not as risky to like with blows to the head. Um, yeah. How about, how about this? How about this? I don't want to see 10 year olds fighting in a ring in Thailand. I don't think that's that crazy. And people are like, oh, it's a part of their culture. Or like care. six-year-olds. I don't, I don't want to see, yeah. Oh, they're helping feed their families. I don't care. That's the same arguments people use to justify sending kids into the coal mine. But shout out to in, Thailand. In the 1800s. Though. Like, shout this out is to Thailand, though. <laughs> hilarious. Shouts out to Thailand. I get it. Right. But but honestly, like, it's so unethical. I don't even want to see in, like, I've seen Muay Thai events in Ontario, and they'll call them smokers. Oh, it's a smoker. No, these two 14-year-olds are trying to take each other's heads off. Yeah. I don't want to yeah. see that. I do not want to see that. Nobody finds it entertaining. The crowd is silent through the entire thing because a they're uncomfortable. B there's like there's no risk of a but, knockout. But their technique's I will terrible. Say, I will just say though, two fourteen year olds bludging I, each other. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. I Keep, will stay in the though, gym and train. I will Get say. Better. I will say though the reason why they, because the parents come out there and they they eat it up. They eat it up though. So it's like yeah. I don't. I don't. I, I'm just I, just I, me. I, yeah, I'm against you know. child abuse. I don't know about you guys, but personally, I don't think child abuse. We should be. We should be monetizing child abuse. No, like yeah, it's, that's oh, the oh, I, get the I think no, kids. And then, and then, I think kids in sports, um, high level sports, because that is a high level sport that you're talking about, yeah. uh, just gets out of hand. Like, have you ever seen that TV show Friday Night Tykes? Oh yeah! Like you just it's have these parents. Matter. You have these parents acting like these seven, seven to to ten year olds are in like NCAA. Like, like they're acting like it's the Super Bowl. Like they're just kids playing some it's tackle football. To, <laughs> like, it's supposed to be fun, but see, this is <laughs> this is the problem. Is that like again? This is how you build high level athletes. But is it the best way to build? No, no. And here's but, a question. No, here's I, a question. And is it because we as a culture, specifically men, overvalue the value of sports in our society. Hard disagree. No, no, no. Yeah, I have to disagree too. Like, you know, after the uh, Second World War, they created sports so that way uh, they could build up some sort of, you know, uh, morale and uh, uh, yeah. amongst, you know, yeah, go ahead, Stephano. You could probably speak to this better than but I can. At what, yeah, no, 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 what risk? Well, though, I, because at what I think cost? David's onto something. I do think in some cases, sure, we maybe, because be sports aren't for everybody, right? Sports are definitely, I, I, you know, I have friends, I have, I have family members who like, you know, have never felt more out of place in sports, men, women, wh- whatever, and they have their own path to growth and self-development. But I think for a lot of people, we shouldn't undersell the value of sport as a, a vehicle for self-development. And yeah, after football, football came about after the American Civil War as as an alternative to, um, you know, killing each other on a battlefield. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's a because, place to take that yeah. energy because you do as like I think both for men and women. But I think for men in particular, 
this is just how I feel. You get a lot out of competition. Like you get all you, there, you, there, you, you have and you have a certain energy that you have to place in a competitive I, field. Yeah, and even 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 if it's not necessarily competition, out of self mastery, right? I, I, I think like it, it, could be, it could be it could be the viol it could be playing the violin, right? Yeah, we got to wrap soon because we're running out of time. Um, Sorry, go on, David. I'm, I apologize. Uh, no, I was just going to say, I do think it's weird, um, you know, like when, if like you're an eight or 10 year old boxer and you say, you know, I want to be a professional boxer, like, or even like a, it, it's like an eight or 10 year old saying, I want to be a professional soccer player. Like, yeah, it's great to be playing soccer and having fun with your friends. And yeah, if you're good, you can even join like a local team and, if you're really good, maybe you can even join like an academy or something. But I, I think when you start adultifying children, like you know, yeah. with sports, yeah. you do that way too early. Yeah, yeah. Like adults way too early, and it becomes almost a job. At by the time they're like ten years old. Oh, and, and by see, the like, way, kids there's, there's the no better way to dime. Yeah, there's the kids don't they don't get, get a dime, and there's no better way to turn your kids off sports than to live your failed sports career ambitions through them Yo. and try and treat it like they have a full time job. There's yeah. no better way to push them away from sports, right? But again, if you this is where this parallel of combat sports and like treating it like a sport because AAU, this is how the Ball Brothers, despite one of them not even making it to the league, are millionaires, right? <laughs> We have to we have to understand the cons and the pros of the pros and the cons of this, right? And yeah, and I mean, but build it's it, it, exactly there's pros and cons. Like not to mention the fact that let's say if somebody, I mean, I agree, David. You have to let your child, and I mean, I, I agree with you. I, stuff, no, I agree. No, you I have agree. to let your child gravitate towards the sport. But let's say they do want to treat it as a job. The amount of capacity that you have to learn whatever discipline you want to learn is so much better when you're younger. So if they sure. were to take it as seriously as a job, the leaps and bounds that they'll have as a child, as opposed to when they get older, are, are exponentially grow higher. I, I agree. Really, I also think, sorry, go on, David. No, I was going to say, we really got to wrap, but that, yeah, I, I would yeah, say, I yeah, I, I, I totally agree with that. Um, but it, if we then make, you know, it, these children's jobs and we say, okay, you're working towards a career or profession where you're going to be paid for your skills, um, then I agree with Stefano. We, we got to put those best practices and safety protocols in early because if not, if it's just a case of, okay, we you can get paid for the skill, but for you to develop the skill, you need to spend X amount of time in underground smokers where you're risking your life and you know the safety per, uh, precautions aren't the best, then yeah, you're really just harming a generation of people because you're ha hanging the carrot in front of them and not showing them, you know, pretty much like the hole in front of them where they could fall into anyway. Yeah, that's my yeah, thought. yeah. And I'd, I'd say I'd say that like as far as skill development, you don't need hard sparring as a kid. It's something you Absolutely should not. yeah introduce yeah. it a little older if they want to fight. But when you're talking about like a seven eight year old. This is not a fully formed person yet. You don't know if they want to fight I, I don't, yet. I don't you like can't. Yeah, so kids, kids in, in fights. I, I mean, like, either, me either. Touch, you know, touch like, sparring. I, I, touch sparring is okay. Dude, hey, I, I, I've said it. I've said it with low contact touch sparring all the time. Like I, you know, I talk. You know, I, I go around. And I, I, you know, I see some of these people, and I say in passing, I'm like, I don't want to see two kids fight. I don't want to see two kids fight. Yeah, what? It sucks. No offense to the children. It sucks. You know? It the sucks. The parents come out there, and I get it. It's it's it's. No one in the audience. I no one in the audience enjoys it. Yeah. No one. No one likes it. And two. These are kids fighting each other. Like, you tell me how if they were not in the ring, they're suspended from school for a couple of weeks because we don't like to see it. So right. now, you, you know, you know what I find so weird about this too, as a culture. And I, sorry, I know this is a little off off tangent, but like, as a culture, we're so weird about what we're cautious exposing our kids to. On, uh, you know what I mean? It's like, go ahead, let them fight in a ring in front of people, expose them to brain trauma and violence. But God forbid they hear the word crap. You know, okay, like God, God forbid, forbid God forbid, grown forbid they say a four letter word in school. That's a big problem. I was gonna but, say, God forbid the two grown adults in a ring start swearing at each other. But you know, if you're a child, yeah, it's right. no no problem. Like fine. Right. Oh my God, David! A perfect example. Like, oh, those are dirty words. Don't say those dirty words as you're elbowing my face and in, into a bloody mess. Be it's respectful. offensive. <laughs> yeah, be respectful. <laughs> that was, that was, okay, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta wrap it up. All so, right. um, can, can I tell the people about what we did? Hey, it didn't feel like a two-hour show to me, so I know it won't feel like a two-hour show to you guys. So, like and share, man. They'll like this episode. I mean, geez, I did. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Yes.
That was better than I could have done. Holy shit. That was nice. If you listen to this, you you're you'll go you go by quickly. Did you guys have fun? I had fun. Yeah, no, yeah. it was, it was a- as much fun I had as much fun today as I did watching the fights yesterday. I mean that. Yeah. Um, real quick, uh, I just wanted to. We I so we said we had a couple of big announcements, both in the stature of the competitors and their actual accomplishments. Um, last week we had Czech Congo on the phones. Uh, Czech Congo, former UFC fighter, current Bellator fighter, uh, challenger for the Bellator heavyweight throne. He's going to be fighting Timothy Johnson in a couple of weeks. Um, and in a momentous occasion uh, where France has actually legalized MMA, which is huge because if you know Taylor Lapuli, Lapulus, uh, Czech Congo, um, uh, what, what, what's his name? What's his face? Uh, Cyril Gaon. Um, How'd you forget about Cyril Gaon? How dare you? CDE, like, bro. I'm sorry. <laughs> and then and uh, Francis Ngannou, all, you know, not originally, but all out of France, right? So clearly there is talent in France to be had and – MMA is now legalized in France, so this is big. He came on the podcast. He talked to us about uh, the. He forgot your name, which was hilarious. He forgot my name. I was a little offended. <laughs> I told him I've been watching him since the Mustafa Al Turk fight, but it's okay. It's all right. You remember these guys? Then it's okay. You know? yeah, and he like, oh, no was... sold that too. It's all you like, guys okay. It's okay. Yeah. yeah, but but hey, we we had a, we had a great time. Uh, super cool dude. Excellent human being. Talk to us about the importance of giving back to your community. Talk to us about his fights on his upcoming opponent, his career, uh, how he came up in martial arts. Talk to us a little bit about um, his his thoughts on the Kobe Covington comments and Black Lives Matter. Uh, he was just an open book. He was phenomenal. It was a pleasure to talk to him. So I hope you guys uh, tune in for that and enjoy it as much as we enjoyed talking to him because for me, it was surreal. I grew up watching this guy. And uh, Maybe uh, maybe one of you guys, since I wasn't there, want to tell us about tell our audience about the other famous guest we had on. Uh, David, you, East Asia correspondent, East Asian correspondent, Larry, David. Man, East Asian cool first of all, just shout out to Czech Congo because yeah, I agree that was really surreal. Um, can't explain that enough. Um, also surreal was our next guest, um, a legend, a young legend in the making, my Wonder Girl Fairtex, who fights uh, in One FC. Um, I believe she's only had two fights so far, but at the same fights time, fights in one FC. Yeah, sorry, one fighting championship. Um, she's based out of Thailand. Um, she's a Muay Thai champion. Um, she's one of the best female Thai fighters in the world, from what I understand. Anyway, we at the Like a Podcast were really humbled to speak with her. Um, I'm re- literally going through my notes here, and I, I, just to add to the, uh, both interviews. Um, both people, both of those people, um, not just gracious with their times, but as candid and as honest with their words. As yeah. I, you know, so I, I have to just say that was yeah uh, extremely, it was just, it was just really, I, I've been there, especially with basketball athletes. And, you know, this is not to like throw some dirt in the basketball athletes. They, you know, they're not as comfortable. So for them to kind of just, you know, show us kind of a side of themselves and be comfortable was really 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 humbling and really the best way i would describe it it was like you know we were talking to one of each other in this podcast you know what i mean like it was just there was no like you know um oh this is my media responses these are my talking points it was kind of like we asked them a question and they would just answer it and complete con- candor yeah having a conversation with like a real human being so thank you very much to wonder girl for text and um check congo because yeah, that that was amazing to be part of that. All right. Um, yeah, Stefano, you want to throw in the children now? All right. All right. So here at the Light Kick, we uh, we love doing this for you. We love having interviews. We're back in the studio, as you can see. We've got our beautiful posters up on the wall. Uh, we got Jeremy. <laughs> but as you can see, I uh, just wanted to quickly point out to you guys, this fight never happened. Dominic, one of the biggest tragedies, I think, in MMA history, Dominic Cruz versus Henan Burrow. So that's a little bit of a collector's item. Um yeah, uh, thank you for those of you that uh, have subscribed and liked and you know told your friends about the Lake Kick podcast. We're growing more and more every day, and we do see you out there. We do see you guys paying attention to us, and we, we really appreciate it. Um, stay tuned for what's in store. We've got a lot coming for you guys. More fight, famous guests, more fighters, more great discussions, more hilarious shouts out to this guy. Um, but 
we are taking over the podcasting world. Step aside, Joe Rogan. Step aside, Jack Slack. And we are taking over. Hold on. I like so, Jack Slack. I like him, but I step like... aside. But step aside, Luke <laughs> Thomas. I like Luke Thomas, but step aside. I like Dan Hardy, but get out my way. All right? Move, <laughs> B-word. Get out the way. Get out the way, B-word. Get out the way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now, um, listen, if you don't like, comment, and subscribe when we make it to the top on our journey up, and we find out about you that you're, you know, you're just a filthy casual that's only started paying attention to us when we get big, we will take your children. We will send them off to Thailand and send them to the worst possible gym that throws in fighters way too soon. And we will force your children to fight for a living. Against farm animals. Against... Are you calling Thai people farm animals? What's wrong with you? What? No. Against, no I was going to say, we'll get them to fight. Thai we'll get them to fight. has a long history of agriculture, and I respect it. And David, that was offensive. Um, I'm just going to say, we'll force them to fight Thai <laughs> children who have already had 400 fights by the time they're 10 years old. And then and then you can come talk to me and tell me how much you like, uh, how much you like children fighting in a ring. So, um, guys, Mike, to play us out, what does that mean? Or canceled. No, um, <laughs> that's going to be my new favorite thing. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, in this crazy mixed up world where we go two hours long on a podcast, holy crap. Just remember, you got three things. You got life, you got family, and you got this podcast. Stay safe, everybody. Wakanda forever. <laughs>